to the residents of District 13 that this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. it will be my monthly office hours at the Dunkin' Donuts on Broadway Parkway. And also let residents know that also going on this Saturday, the Villages of Larchwood is having their annual um, neighborhood yard sale. So anyone is interested in grabbing some uh, good deals um, can take some time and go visit Villages of Larchwood. Thank you. Don't see any other hands. I do have a couple of District 2 announcements on this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon will be the District 2 community cleanup um, at the in the parking lot of the Haynes Middle School. There will be bulk item drop off as well as the shredder truck to shred any documents that you may have. There will be electronics recycling. Um, and one other thing that has skipped my mind. Uh, but the big thing is the um, bulk item drop off, electronics recycling, as well as the shredder truck will be at Haynes Middle School. We will also be meeting at the Exxon during that same time uh, at the intersection of Brick Church Pike and West Trinity Lane to clean up that area, particularly around the overpass uh, on West Trinity Lane. Um, so if you'd like to volunteer for that, please come out. Uh, we will be meeting up at 6.45 and, and cleaning from 8 a.m. to noon. Also on Tuesday, May the 23rd at 6 p.m. is the monthly District 2 community meeting. Um, as everyone knows, we meet on the fourth Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. at the William D. Bodenhamer Building, which is the North Precinct in the community room. We do have a couple of rezoning presentations uh, for Zero Ewing Drive, which is the corner of Ewing Drive and Night Drive, as well as uh, Zero Old Matthews Road, which is the development that is currently underway uh, across from Haynes Middle School. And we will also have a budget presentation by yours truly to go over the mayor's budget and the impact to District 2. So again, uh, District 2 community cleanup on this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon, as well as our monthly community meeting on Tuesday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. at the North Precinct Community Room. Please reach out to me with any questions or concerns. And I know council members are still in committee, so I will hang out for a little bit to allow others to give any announcements that they have.
Uh, thank you, Madam Prunte. I want to announce that this Saturday, uh, between three and four, I'll be continuing my budget conversation series, and the series for this Saturday will be on housing. Uh, there's a lot of conversation, there is crisis in Nashville, and there's a lot that we have to do. Uh, this particular conversation wants to focus on one of the other tools that we have in the toolbox, which is where we're trying to uh, increase the different type of housing that we have. And we know that there's a lot of small businesses, churches that want to get in the housing uh, market to be able to provide affordable housing for their members, but they don't know how to do that. So one of the bills that I passed last year was the allocation of the 20% to minority businesses for housing. So this Saturday, I'm gonna have Ms. Ashley from uh, Barnes Fund come and talk about what this entails, how do they get involved. I'm also gonna have uh, Mr. Marshall from the Housing Fund talks about what are the things that they need. And hopefully we have more people in the, in the business producing housing and then we have affordability, at least in areas where people are not sure what to do and what steps to take. So I invite everyone to join. It's gonna be on Facebook Live uh, and it will be from three to 4 p.m. Thank you.
All right. All right, last call for council member announcements. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, just a couple quick announcements for some pretty significant community events. Uh, there's one that I, I wish council member Rosenberg were here for because he has uh, talked about it in the past, um, but he advised that I was able to talk about it. Uh, the Bellevue Community Picnic is this weekend, Saturday, May 20th. It's the 44th annual Bellevue Community Picnic. I recommend going for the food and the rides, but either staying or coming back for the fireworks at the end of the evening. Uh, you can learn more about that at BellevueHarpethChamber.com. Uh, also this weekend, before that, if the skies work out for everybody, uh, I recommend checking out the Tour de Nash. This year, Walk Bike Nashville has a the city tour, which is the nine mile ride. It's a non-race ride that uh, features some of the ways to move around the city, but the nine mile city tour is gonna be fully protected this year in a partnership with NDOT. Um, so do check that out. You can learn more about the Tour de Nash, which is a great way uh, to experience the city by bike. Uh, this weekend, walkbikenashville.org. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Are there any other council member announcements? All right, seeing none, that ends the announcement period. Tonight's meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Council is coming to you live from the Council Chambers at the historic Metro Courthouse. It's a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Like the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its 91st business meeting of a four-year term. This is the 14th Council meeting of 2023 and includes four special sessions this year. Tonight's agenda is 39 pages long, contains 104 items, includes a public comment period and one resolution on public hearing. There's also 35 regular regular resolutions, 15 first reading bills, eight second reading bills, and 66 ordinances on third and final reading. Council will also consider four appointments and one reappointment to Metro Boards and Commissions for Mayor John Cooper. The appointments are two to the Planning Commission, one to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and one to the Metropolitan Development Housing Board. The renomination is to the Metro Civil Service Commission. If confirmed, those nominated will serve multi-year terms as unpaid volunteers. The most significant legislation before the council tonight are two ordinances. They are Mary John Cooper's operating budget and property tax levels for the upcoming 20, or should I say levies, tax levies for the upcoming 2023-2024 fiscal year, which begins July 1st. Uh, the budget bill is BL 2022-1867. The property tax levies bill, which are unchanged for this current fiscal, this current fiscal year, is BL 2023-1686. The proposed operating budget is $3.2 billion, up about 6.2% from the current Metro spending plan. Much of that increase will go to schools and additional public safety employees. The budget also provides a 4% cost of living adjustment and a 3% pay raise for Metro emplo employees, including Metro public school employees. Uh, these bills will pass on first reading tonight and will come back to the council for a public hearing on second reading at the next council meeting on June 6th. In the meantime, the council will be holding multiple committee meetings in the next few weeks going over the budget request, talking with department heads, school School officials and others about what other needs may need to be addressed that aren't addressed in the, in the budget right now. The council is required to pass a budget and the property tax rates for the urban services and general services district no later than June 30th. If not, the mayor's budget and tax rates go into effect automatically. That has only happened once in Metro history. That was back in 2019. It's unlikely to happen again this year because no tax increase is really being proposed. The city's annual capital improvements budget is also a late item on tonight's agenda. It's a five-year planning document that does not appropriate or spend any monies. However, any any capital project the city plans to undertake must be in this budget. To add a project during the budget year requires a two-thirds or 27 yes votes to do so. The capital budget is a late item, so if more than two or more council members object to considering it tonight, the bill will have to be deferred. That's not expected to happen, but the metal char charter requires the capital improvements budget to be approved on three readings as an ordinance by June 15th of each year. Therefore, a special meeting may be required to accomplish that this year. As for resolutions in terms of property taxes, there is under state metro law a property tax freeze program that provides financial assistance to low and elderly income residents. RS 2023-2159 sets and increases the income eligibility to apply for pro the property tax freeze. Today, right now, the limit is $47,750 as far as income. Resolution RS 2023-2159 increases the maximum income limit for eligibility in the property tax freeze program in Davidson County to $60,000. If you'd like more information about that, contact the Metro Trustee's Office. Each year, Metro Government also 
also sets aside 4% of the funds it receives and allocates for equipment and building repairs. RH 2023-2160 allocates almost $35 million to 10 different departments. That includes $7 million to information technology services for equipment, almost $8.3 million for the Department of General Services for building repairs and equipment, $6.5 million for the Metropolitan Parks and Recreation for building and repairs and equipment, $3 million for the Sheriff's Department for building repairs and equipment, $3 million for equipment for the Metro Police, and just over a million dollars for the National Department of Transportation for equipment. There's also a late resolution tonight that uh, uh, let's now move to memorializing resolutions. The Council Honor Patricia Elgin's one of the founding members of the Free Store, which is a small community cooperative which freely exchanges donated new or used goods among neighbors. The Council will also honor the board, National Board of Directors of the Sierra Club. They are coming to Nashville to meet here on May 19th and 20th. Finally, the Council will recognize the month of May as Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Nashville and Davidson County. One of the first reading bill of some note, it concerns a renewal of the entertainment transportation certificates of public necessity and convenience and entertainment transportation vehicles downtown, otherwise known as the party buses. There's now a controversy. The city board that oversees transportation uh, recently renewed all the vehicle permits in effect and may be adding more, even though there have been calls and recommendations to cut the number of such vehicles downtown. The board is asking through the bill that's before it tonight to, uh, on first reading, to give to ask the council to give them the powers to adjust it one way or the other. Again, this is on first reading tonight, so it should pass an omnibus with the rest of the first reading bills and we have any controversy it'll start showing up at the next meeting in two weeks. Once the bill on second reading uh, the, another bill that may bring some debate tonight is BL 2023-1857 it would change the regulation of now fireworks in Nashville and Davidson County. Under the current Metro law no firm no, per, no person firm partnership or, corpora or corporation is authorized to sell, use or explode any fireworks in Davidson County without a permit. That generally means only professional fireworks firms that do firework shows can do that, can perform that in Davidson County. The bill also allow fireworks to be used under certain conditions, including age, different requirements, permission of the property owners. Um, this bill is probably going to be deferred tonight. There is an amendment that was actually put on by the sponsor that would cut down the hours that could be done really only on the 4th of July from sometime late in the morning until about uh, sometime that night. But again, uh, there is opposition for this from the fire department and from the fire marshal. The council wants to hear from the police department about this, and so the bill's being deferred for two weeks. On third reading, uh, BL 2023 1829 uh, had, had quite a bit of controversy two weeks ago. It passed on second reading after emotional two-hour rezoning public hearing and council debate on the zoning measure. The rezoning involves the renovation of the Bellmead Plaza Shopping Center. The plan has been hotly contested by surrounding neighbors, concerned about traffic, parking, the height of some of the buildings that would be added, and other issues. There are multiple amendments that have been filed, and most of them have been, all of them have been reviewed so far by the council's planning and zoning committee, which voted yesterday in, unanimously in favor of the plan. So it looks like the bill will come up tonight. Maybe some additional amendments. Amendments um, reheard again that were heard in committee, but it appears at this point the, the bill, the, the votes may be here to pass the bill on third and final reading, which will take um, 21 votes. Another um, bill on third reading tonight is BL 2023-1688, which would change the city's regulation of animals. This is a bill that passed on second reading two weeks ago after a substitute bill was approved. Before that, the measure, which had been deferred twice earlier and earlier versions of the bill had been unsuccessful. Now it appears the bill was posed to get final approval tonight, although there is yet another amendment that has been filed. Will the rules allow the change on this bill, uh, allow this kind of change on the third reading bill, which usually is only required, only allowed under a rezoning bills or a change to the city's text of zoning regulations? The council could suspend its rules, but again, if two, if two council members object, the rules can't be suspended. Finally, on third reading, the council will once again consider BL 2022-1471 to amend the definitions in the Metro Code of, the, of a dwelling unit and family. The bill's been before the council since last September and has been deferred, substituted, and amended multiple times. The major sticking point of the bill remains how many unrelated bill, how many unrelated people and persons can live in the same dwelling unit. Uh, there is yet another substitute ordinance being offered to I will see if any progress has been made towards getting final approval. Again, that's 21 yes votes tonight for final approval. If you want to follow tonight's council meeting as it progresses, you can find the agenda and the staff analysis online. You can go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then go on to the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they come up for consideration so you can follow along and keep up with where we are on the meeting agenda. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He'll be gaveling tonight's council meeting into order shortly.
Can I get council members to uh, take their seats so we can count? Uh, we need 27 members to start. Okay, three times. Right now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to this um, meeting of the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. While members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is brought to us by Pastor Derek Faison of the Impact Church of Nashville, a guest of Council Member Jennifer Gamble. May we bow our heads for just a moment. Eternal God and our Father, we bow in our hearts before you today in the midst of this august body of individuals gathered today. You told us in your word, God, to acknowledge you in all of our ways and that you, God, would direct our paths. And so, God, we ask that you would direct hearts and minds and conversations tonight we ask God because you are the ultimate wisdom and the ultimate power. And we know, God, that when you direct our paths, all things will be done well. And so, God, we ask that you would rest in us tonight. Direct hearts, direct minds, direct conversations. For we know that there is no counsel that is greater than yours, no wisdom that is greater than yours. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic which is our nation is God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, y'all may be seated. Uh, the banger of the gavel, wait, oh, he's getting ready to leave. <laughs> Uh, it's Willie. He um, he showed up at our last uh, public uh, hearing and did such a good job that we asked Willie to come back. He's a fifth grader, and um, he did an excellent job of banging the gavel. Thank you, Willie. Appreciate it. Okay, you can take off. All right. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting for May 2nd, 2023? Got a motion properly second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Mr. Clark, any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right, thank you. All right, so um, a couple of things that well, actually we have several things to talk about before we get started. Uh, we do have an assistant legal counsel, uh, a new one. If you haven't uh, met Brian Wilson, he's not with the Beach Boys, but uh, he seems to know the law. Brian Wilson, if you would stand up, our new assistant legal counsel in the Metro Council office. We have not heard him sing yet, but um, you can certainly ask him. 
All right, uh, we have a number of students uh, here from our area tonight um, that will be representing uh, the Nashville region as student ambassadors through our Sister Cities of Nashville program. Uh, we actually have 25 students that are going to two of our um, sister city cities, uh, Con France and Mendoza, Argentina. Uh, they're going with four chaperones. Um, as you all know, these trips are very, very important both for the students and the city uh, because they certainly help to promote friendship uh, and our friendships around the world. Um, and as we have done in the past, I've been asked to administer an oath that they will take officially recognizing them as student ambassadors from the Nashville area. Um, if I could ask uh, the students and, sh and the chaperones to come up uh, right at the wall uh, where the swinging gate is, if you all would come up um, and then um, face us, and then I will administer the oath. And while they're coming, um, uh, we have uh, 25 students that are from eight area schools. You can spread across the area if you need to, okay? Uh, the schools that are being represented on these trips are Hillsborough High School, uh, Battleground Academy, Hume Fogg, Ensworth, uh, University School of Nashville, Harpeth Hall, uh, MLK, and the Nashville School of the Arts. And um, before we actually administer the oath, uh, I'm gonna read the names of the students that are going. Oh, there's a lot of them, okay. <clears throat> These are the students uh, that are going to Con France. If you'll just kind of uh, raise your hand when I uh, read your name. Afton Werner from Hillsboro. Okay. Jordan Collins from Battleground Academy. Uh, Jane Reagan from Hillsboro. Jack Charles Hedrick from Battleground Academy. Austin Cheney from Battleground Academy. Uh, Vike Volgesi from Hume Fogg, okay. Uh, Desralia Quach from Hume Fogg, okay. Uh, Chloe Wright from Battleground Academy. Uh, Mian Windham from Hume Fogg. Uh, Grace Lane from Ensworth. Nora Ledesky from MLK. Soraya Shaw from Hume Fogg. Micah Epstein from MLK. Elizabeth Aka Rosas from uh, Hume Fogg. Okay, and then we have two, um, the chaperones going to Con France are Melanie Taylor, uh, who teaches both at Meg's and Hume Fogg, and uh, Charles Hackamer, who teaches at Hillsboro. Okay, and then the students going to Mendoza are uh, Kira Barth from Hillsboro, uh, Maeve Bixler from Hillsboro, Arlie Owen from National School of the Arts. Charles Knight from Hillsboro, Addie DeCoster from Ensworth, Nola Barth from Hillsboro, Chloe Smolik from USN, Sienna Austin from MLK, Thomas Humphrey from MLK, Chloe Gray from Harpeth Hall, Misha Bonig from Hume Fogg, and the two chaperones are Lynn Robinson from, who teaches at Hillwood High School, and Simon Pearson, who teaches at Donaldson Christian Academy. All right, uh, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Um, all right, so if I could, um, uh, you're at the wall. If I could get the students to raise their right hand and then uh, repeat after me. You ready? I, state your name. I, Nashville. Pledge to represent Nashville. Pledge to represent Nashville as an official student ambassador. As an official student ambassador, I will share the values. I will share the values and culture of Nashville. And the culture of Nashville. And will respect the values. And will respect the values and culture of my host city. And culture of my host city. To help strengthen the relationship. To help strengthen the relationship with our sister city. With our sister city as a part of this important exchange. As a part of this important exchange. Congratulations. All right, uh, safe travels to all of you. Have a wonderful time uh, and come back and report and let us know um, what you find.
But uh, thank you all for doing this. I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful experience. And I see former council member Mina Johnson back at the microphone. Do you have something to say? Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor, the member of Metro Council. We thank you for having us in here. Uh, citizen diplomat uh, ambassadorship is very, very important, and I am very confident uh, they will follow through the pledge and while they're having fun over there. And also, I want to say one thing. Uh, it comes to my attention. Uh, May 18th is a very important day. It is birthday of uh, Vice Mayor Jim Schumann, so we want to wish you a happy birthday. If I had known that, um, Mina, I wouldn't have let you speak. <laughs> All right, um, uh, going on, um, uh, Ashley Brown, is Ashley here? Didn't see her. So Ashley Brown, who has uh, successfully and professionally managed the Barnes Fund for the last couple of years, is leaving her position on May 26th. I think you all got an email about it. We thank her for her service to the city and for her efforts dealing with affordable housing, and we wish her well with her future endeavors. So if you see Ashley before she leaves, um, tell her uh, thank you and good luck. Um, a couple things that you would have gotten, uh, emails, uh, there is a vacancy of both the Nashville Eastern and Eastern Railroad Authority and also on the Cheatham County Rail Authority. Um, I believe Council Member Roten and Stiles serve on those authorities respectively and their terms both expire on June 1st, 2023. Nominations will be taken at the next council meeting on June 6th, uh, 2023. A nominee must be at least 25 years of age and have resided in Davidson County for at least one year. The election to fill those vacancies will be held on June 20th, 2023. Uh, there were also three vacancies on the newly created Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission, uh, which are to be filled by the Metro Council. Uh, these individuals will serve initially for a one-year term. Thereafter, their terms will be four years. Um, we will follow Rule 50 in these appointments. Nominations are to be made by council members at the next meeting, which is June 6, 2023. Elections will be held on June 20th, 2023. Um, there are 12 remaining members uh, that need to be uh, filled, but those are filled by other organizations or other individuals, including the mayor's office, but they must be approved by the council. But these three nominations, three vacancies, will need to be nominated by members of the Metro Council. There are emails that you should have received about both those, all those vacancies, which you can take a look at. And if you have questions, please contact the council office. Um, I've also included on your desk a copy of the winners of the recently announced Hands-On Nashville Strobel Awards uh, for volunteering. Uh, congratulations to the winners and the nominees. Take a look at those. Uh, you may recognize some of those individuals. Um, some really, really great work going on out there. Um, I will also tell you that uh, tomorrow, 4 p.m., uh, our first set, uh, first budget hearing starts tomorrow. Hospital, uh, social services, and health are up. So 4 p.m. right here tomorrow, budget hearing. Um, last thing, as I usually say, is please keep hoping for better things for our world, for people's safety. Um, and again, please remember the people of Ukraine, but also remember as well people around the world, uh, including here in this country, that are in need. Lots of things going on out there. All right, I think we, I think that gets us to our calendar. Uh, we are on elections and confirmations. Council Member Murphy, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We had very robust discussions today that led to the confirmation of Mr. Bill Farmer for the Civil Service Commission for a term expiring on March 31st, 2028, and um, we did build in the renewal options of that without his consent. So that was five in favor, zero against. And then also the MDHA appointment of Mr. Johnny Moore for a term expiring November 5th, 2023. That was five in favor, zero against. We did have two appointments. For the Planning Commission, Mr. Smith, uh, Matthew Smith, for a term expiring on March 31st, 2027. And for Mr. Aron uh, Thompson, for a term expiring on March 31st, 2027. Both of those are being deferred to meetings. Um, so let me back up. Mr. Smith, that was four uh, in favor to defer, one against the deferral. For Mr. Thompson, 
That was five in favor, zero against to defer. And then with the Board of Zoning Appeals, Mr. Robert Ransom for a term expiring on February 26, 2028. That was for approval, four in favor, uh, one against. All right, so one against on the Zoning Appeals Board um, uh, for Mr. Robert Ransom. Yes. It was four, four to one, okay. All right, unless there's an objection, we'll go ahead and defer the two appointments for planning. And you said two meetings? Two meetings. Okay, is there any objection to deferring two meetings on those two appointments? Okay, June 20th, it'll be June 20th. Okay, so um, Councilor Murphy, can I have a, a motion on the other three? Yes, motion to approve. So I got a motion to approve a proper second on the reappointment of Mr. Uh, William Farmer to the Civil Service Commission, the appointment of Mr. Johnny Moore to uh, uh, MDHA, and the appointment of Mr. Robert Ransom to the Zoning Appeals Board. Um, so the motion properly second. Any discussion on the motion? All right. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion is approved. Um, so uh, when I call your name, if you would uh, be willing to stand up and just stay standing and then we'll recognize you at the end. Mr. Bill Farmer for the Civil Service Commission, uh, Mr. Johnny Moore for MDHA, and Mr. Robert Ransom for the Zoning Appeals Board. Thank you all for being willing to serve. Um, members of the council, please join me in thanking them. All right. All right, all right, so um, I'm thinking that, uh, I like that oath thing, I think that maybe we should do that with all members of the commissions that we appoint, okay? All right, uh, we are now ready for um, uh, the public comment period. Um, I will let you know for purposes of the public comment period and for resolutions on public hearing. Uh, we have Spanish interpretation services available. Mr. Castillo is here. Uh, sir, if you would let people know that you are available to assist, we would certainly appreciate it. Mr. Castillo. Thank you. Uh, buenas noches, mi nombre es Ricardo Castillo. Si hay alguien que necesita un traductor para esta sesión, puede acercarse y yo le serviré como intérprete. Thank you. Have a blessed evening. All right, thank you. Uh, apparently we have, um, we had two people sign up in advance and we may have two additional folks. Uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, Miss Virginia McEwen, uh, who lives in the Hermitage area, uh, is here to talk about the Nashville Public Library. Miss McEwen, you're welcome. Thank you so much and good evening. Um, I speak to you today to ask that you fully fund the proposed budget for Nashville Public Library. I come to you not just as a concerned citizen and frequent user of the library, but as someone who's been volunteering on a weekly basis for the last uh, almost 10 years since moving here to Nashville. Um, the last five of those spending uh, most of that time in the equal access department with the library, um, a, an essential function of the library. Um, I can tell you that as one of many volunteers who work on a team to record our voices for uh, magazines, newspapers, and books, other materials as well that people who are blind or visually impaired may not have access to, um, I can tell you walking through those doors every single week, I have yet to find a staff more dedicated, more magical, more mighty and small than um, the Equal Access Department. They have to be mighty and they have to be magical because it is six employees currently serving 700,000 um, differently abled residents. Um, as part of the budget, they are proposing three additional positions added to that department. Um, and I implore you to uh, take a look. There is an urgent need to bridge the gap between the current resources and the growing demand for inclusive services. By investing in these additional staff members, we demonstrate our commitment to a future where accessibility is not a luxury, but a fundamental right. 
We declare that our library is a place where every resident can find themselves represented, celebrated, and empowered. And as Nashville grows, I ask that we build a city that leaves no one behind. So I thank you for your attention and thank you for your dedication to investing in Nashville Public Library as the haven, the lifeline, and really the essential place that embodies our collective imagination for our city. So please vote to fully fund Nashville Public Library. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Felicia Lawrence uh, from Great Circle Road here in Nashville, and she's speaking about COVID-19 rent relief. Ms. Lawrence, are you here? Okay, all right, uh, we have two other folks that have signed up. Um, Ms. Tanya Young from District 21 talking about MNPS. Ms. Young, uh, welcome, and you'll have two minutes, all right? All right, good evening. I'm here to speak on the needs of adding funding. M Ms. Young, you may want to pull that microphone a little closer so we can hear you. I thought I had a big mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Okay, I'm here today to speak on the needs of adding funding for substitutes, for the subs, for uh, metro schools. And um, what I have to say, I am a sub myself. And I've heard, um, I've read on about how they want to um, have subs assigned to certain schools. But with um, my flexibility and my situation, that subbing day by day, it helps me. But also, it helps me while I can take care of my grandchildren. But just the funding that we need because uh, Nashville, the prices have gone up. And trying to ke keep up with that, with what I'm being paid, which is 11.33, when they said all, most subs are getting paid 18 some an hour, it's not true. And on top of that, where I sub yesterday and it touched my heart. I love subbing. I had a child that came up to me, everybody, hey, Miss Young. This one child said, this is school mama right here. That's how much I mean to them, to the students, and that's how much they mean to me. So just, if you could, just look at it and think about it's, it's the future that we're talking about. And we need myself and other subs need this funding to help us to make uh, the future brighter for our younger students. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Young. Uh, and the last speaker today is uh, Haley Trogger from District 33. Ms. Trogger, welcome, uh, and you'll have two minutes. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Hallie Trauger. I'm a resident of the 33rd District and a career and technical education teacher at Antioch High School. I'm also the advocacy chair for the Metro Nashville Education Association. Um, I'm writing to address the same issue. We celebrate a lot the $100 million additional investment in MNPS. Um, we celebrate that most employees in this city are earning a living wage of $18 per hour, um, but there are some critical gaps that we hope that this council will help to address. Um, for me as a teacher, uh, the lack of sub coverage has a huge impact. It has an impact on whether my students are able to learn in my absence. It has an impact on me getting pulled to cover classes when I should be calling parents and prepping. And that's the case all across the city. Um, so in addition to the initiatives that the district is proposing, we also need an investment to ensure that our day-to-day -day subs who are professionals who play a very critical role in our schools, who are school mamas in some cases, that those subs are adequately compensated. We should not have employees in our schools making 11.33 an hour and that harms them. That's 
unacceptable and it also harms our schools and our students in that we are drawing, overdrawing on teachers where we should be able to fill these sub positions. Um, so we're asking that the Metro Council dedicate an additional $35 million investment to ensure that all substitute teachers, like all other MNPS staff, earn at least $18 an hour. Um, and in addition to that ask, uh, we are also asking for an additional $2.7 million. Our MOU um, expands bereavement leave for teachers, but that is not funded in the current aspirational budget. So we hope that you all will take a step to rectify that. Um, and finally, an additional funding to uh, provide longevity pay. Uh, veteran teachers are those who really hold down our buildings, make things possible for newer teachers like me. Um, and we think that they deserve compensation uh, to keep them in the district and show them the respect they deserve. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Sawara, would you mind getting their information and finding out, uh, particularly we may have that 35 million, but just get their information so we can follow up. All right, thank you. All right, uh, I think those are the four that, um, well, we had three people that uh, spoke. So we are now ready for uh, resolutions on public hearing. Uh, we have one tonight. Um, so here's how that works. If anybody's here for the resolution, I'll call up the resolution, refer to the sponsor. Uh, uh, unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing, then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution, then ask for a show of hands who are against the resolution. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I'll ask you to come forward, find the microphone, introduce yourself, and give us your address, uh, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak, then ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak, we'll do the exact same thing in reverse. Um, after that process, I'll close the public hearing, refer back to the sponsor. Uh, so we are now ready for the first measure. Uh, it is RS 2023-2157 by Council Member Withers. It's a resolution exempting Estelle, located at 814 Woodland Street, from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Withers, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? Uh, you certainly can. Government Operations, Council Member Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the, the committee met and passed this five in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, so declare the public hearing open. I'd like to see a show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. Okay, uh, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? Nope, you're good. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Weathers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right, so I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded back to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The, uh, this actually, uh, the, these fine folks uh, worked with my historic Edgefield Neighborhood Association to secure their support uh, for this a little while back. This is uh, one of the oldest houses in Nashville. It goes back, I believe, to 1807 uh, in parts. Uh, and the... Uh, Proprietors of the business worked with the Edgefield Neighborhood Association previously um, and secured support for this. This is uh, simply a name change for the organization. So I uh, want to thank them for continuing to be sensitive to the values of the community and uh, hope folks will patronize the business once it gets up and running fully. So with that, I renew my motion to approve. All right. So Council Member Withers has moved for approval um, for passage on RS 2023-2157. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2023-2157 for passage say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Um, I'm, I'm witnessing, I believe I see Karen Johnson in the back. There she is. Uh, our um, Registrar of Deeds is here. Thank you for being here. I didn't see you at first. All right. So um, anyway, all right. Thank you, Councilman Withers. We're now ready for consent resolutions and resolutions. We do have a consent calendar tonight. Um, let me go through this and let me know if anything needs to be bumped off. Uh, item number two, RS 2023-2121 is on consent. Uh, 2158 is on consent. 2159 is on consent. 2160 is on consent. I believe I just told that our trustee is also in the audience. I didn't see our trustee, Erica Gilmore. Where is she? There she is. Okay. 
Thank you, uh, trustee. I'm, I'm glad that somebody told me that you were back there. All right, so let's go back. Um, I'm on RS 2023-2160 is on consent. 2161 is on consent. 2162 is on consent. 2163 is on consent. 2165 is on consent. 2166 is on consent. 2167 is on consent. 2168 is on consent. 2169 is on consent. 2170 is on consent. 2171 is on consent. 2172 is on consent. 2173 is on consent. 2174 is on consent. 2176 is on consent, 2177 is on consent, 2178 is on consent, 2179 is on consent, 2180 is on consent, 2181 is on consent, 2183 is on consent, 2184 is on consent, 2185 is on consent, 2186 is on consent, 2188 is on consent, 2189 is on consent, 2190 is on consent, and that's it. All right, anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar. Council Member Parker, you recognized. Please pull items four and five. Okay. Okay, items four is uh, pulled and item five is pulled. Okay, anything else needs to be bumped off consent? All right, uh, let's go through these. Um, all right, uh, first item on consent is item number two by Councilmember Murphy, O'Connell, Welsh, and others. It's RS 2023-2121. Resolution requesting the Metropolitan Employee Benefit Board reevaluate its decision to offer a group Medicare Advantage plan to Metropolitan Government pensioners as their only option. Item number three, Roten and Gamble, RS 2023-2158. Resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $163 million in the aggregate principal amount of interfund tax anticipation notes to the Upon government. Item number six, RS 2023 2161 by Councilmember Roten. Resolution appropriating to certain accounts to the benefit of the Administrative Department, Department of General Services, uh, the Mediation Services Fund, Metropolitan National Public Schools, the amount of $18,707,700. Uh, number seven by Councilmember Roten, RS 2023 2162. Resolution calling the Independent Metropolitan Board of Equalization in a regular session beginning June 1st, 2023, and special session beginning June 20th, 2023. Item number eight, RS 2023-2163 by Council Member Roten, a resolution approving the appointment of hearing officers by the Independent Metropolitan Board of Equalization to conduct preliminary hearings to make investigations regarding complaints before the board. Uh, item number 10, Roten, Syracuse, and Hurt, RS 2023-2165. Resolution approving a total of $169,000 from a certain account of the Community Safety Fund for grants to various nonprofit organizations for South Nashville Community Safety Programs, RS 2023-2166 by Council Member Roten. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metropolitan Government, acting bond through the Davidson County Juvenile Court to establish and enforce federal and state-mandated child support program guidelines for children born out of wedlock. Item number 12, RS 2023-2167 by Allen and Roten, a resolution approving an amended economic implant, imp, impact plan for the Madison Station Economic Development Area. RS 2023-2168, Roten and Suara, resolution to approve the First Amendment to a grant contract for constructing affordable housing approved by RS 2022-1857 between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission and Woodbine Community Organization. Item number 14, Roten, Withers, and Suara, RS 2023-2169. Resolution approving a grant for the National Community Engagement Fund of the Community Foundation Middle Tennessee to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Planning Commission to provide funds, uh, funding to subsidize the Barnes Fund's efforts to support affordable housing. RS 2023-2170 by Roten, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law, compromise and settle personal injury claim of John Foy against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $23,016.50. Set amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. RS 2023 uh, 2171, Roten, Syracuse, and Suara. Resolution accepting emergency management performance grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, the Metropolitan Government, through the Office of Emergency Management to subsidize the emergency management program. Uh, 
Item number 17, RS 2023-2172 by Rutland Syracuse. Resolution approving a letter of assistance for 2023 Urban Area Security Initiative grant funds by the Metropolitan Government. Uh, acting bond through the Office of Emergency Management to the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency for Homeland Security District 5. RS 2023-2173, Rutland Syracuse. A resolution approving a letter of acceptance for 2023 Homeland Security grant funds by the Metropolitan Government acting through the Office of Emergency Management to the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency for Homeland Security District 5. RS 2023-2174, item number 19, Rutland and Syracuse. Resolution approving a contract bond between the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the Tennessee Department of Health to identify arboviruses and assist the prevention and control of vector-borne diseases in Tennessee. Uh, item number 21, RS 2023-2176, Rutland Syracuse and others. A resolution approving Amendment 7 to a grant for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the Metropolitan Government acting bond through the Board, Metropolitan Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations for fine particulate matter in Nashville, Tennessee. Item number 22, Roden and Hurd and Sawara, RS 2023-2177. Resolution approving a total of $51,437.95 to increase the individual grant amounts for the National Public Library to various nonprofit organizations for the provision of educational, career, and cultural field trips and enrichment opportunities through the library's Nashville After Zone Alliance Out of School Time Coordinating System. RS 2023-2178, item number 23, Roden, Hurd and Sawara. Resolution approving a total of $40,247 to the National Public Library to various nonprofit organizations for the provision of education career and cultural field trips and enrichment opportunities for the month of June 2023 through the library's National After Zone Alliance Out of School Time Coordinating System. RS 2023-2179, Roden, Hurt, and Suar Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant for the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Metropolitan Government acting through the National Public Library to target library materials to persons having difficulty using a library, provide special services to children and young people, and promote general education support services. Item number 25, RS 2023-2180, Roden, Hurt, and Suar Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant for the National Public Library Foundation to the Metropolitan Government through the National Public Library to fund educational literacy programs to provide literacy initiatives that emphasize the importance of de developing literacy skills by educating teachers, children, and parents. RS 2023-2181, Withers and Pulley. Resol resolution authorizing CTH Nashville LLC doing business at City Tap House Nashville to construct and install an area encroachment at 205 to Mombrian. Uh, item number 28, RS 2023-2183, Roden and Pulley. Resolution approving an application for a Tire Environmental Act program Program grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metropolitan Government through the National Department of Transportation for NDOT's project Let's Gain Traction with Vision Zero, which seeks to repurpose tires collected from neighborhood cleanups, illegal dumping, and convenience centers, transform this waste into bike lane barriers to provide safe multimodal options for cyclists. Item number 29, RS 2023-2184, Taylor Roden and Pulley. Resolution accepting a donation from 19th Church Street LLC in the amount of 214000 as a contribution towards infrastructure improvements in the intersection of 19th Avenue and Church Street, RS 2023-2185, Roten and Pulley, resolution accepting a grant for the State of Tennessee, Department of Environment and Conservation to the Metropolitan Government through the uh, Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services uh, to construct stormwater swells and stormwater detention basin features at the Metro, the Metro National Police impound lot. Item number 31, RS 2023-2186 by Council Member Roten, a resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle uh, Metropolitan Government and National Davidson County's property damage claim against TCOM LLC in the amount of $84,535 set amount to be paid to the general fund. Item number 33, RS 2023-2188, Bradford Sledge and O'Connell resolution honoring Patricia Elkins of the free store. RS 2023-2189, item number 34, by Council Member Syracuse, a resolution to honor the Board of Directors of the Sierra Club on their meeting in Nashville, Tennessee on May 19th and 20th, 2023. And item number 35, RS 2023-2190, Hurt and Styles Resolution recognized in the month of May as Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Nashville and Davidson County. Those are the resolutions on the consent calendars. Does anything need to be bumped off? All right, seeing none, I've got committee reports that are due. Affordable housing, who's got that one? All right, Councilmember Taylor, affordable housing. Thank you, um, RS 2023 to 2168 and RS 2023 2169 were uh, voted on seven in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Gamble, you have budget and finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. 
RS uh, 2023 uh, recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 20, approval, 12 in favor, zero against. 2162 uh, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. 2163 recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. 2165 budget and finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 2166 budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 2167 recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 2168 recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 2169 recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023 2170 a budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2171, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2172, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. Uh, RS 2023-2173, budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. 20, RS 2023-2174, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2175, recommend approval, nine in favor, zero against, and one abstention. RS 2023-2176, budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2177, budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2178, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2179, uh, budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2180, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2183, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2184, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2185, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. RS 2023-2186, budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero <coughs> against. All right, thank, thank you. All. Good job. Thank Council you. Mayor Withers, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and Zoning considered resolutions RS 2023-2169 and 2181, and we recommended approval of both of those, seven in favor, zero against, zero all extensions. All right, thank you. Council Mayor Hart, public facilities, you've got four of them, I think. Thank you. Uh, Public Facilities, Arts and Culture voted six in favor and zero against for 2177, 2178, 2179, 2180, and 2190. No, that was, that we, I'm sorry. That's all right. Just those four. Just those four. That Thank was, you. yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, no problem. Councilmember Syracuse, you've got uh, Public Health. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Which ones were on consent? Uh, 2164, 65. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then 71 through 76. Gotcha. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, public health and safety considered RS 2023, 2164, uh, 2171, 2172, 2173, 2174, 2175, 2176, and 21. Uh, nope, and that's it. Uh, all recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against on uh, RS 2023, 2165. We recommend approval, eight in favor, one abstention. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councilor Murphy, uh, rules and confirmations. All of ours were five in favor, zero against. All right. And Council Member Pulley, you've got the last group. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transportation recommended approval, RS 2023. 2181, 2183 through 2185, six in favor, zero against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so council member uh, Pulley has moved approval of the consent calendar properly, seconded, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent, cal uh, consent calendar for resolution say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, consent resolutions agenda passes. All right, so we're going to go now to the ones that weren't on uh, the consent calendar. Item number four, RS 2023 2159 by Parker, Suara, Evans, Tombs, and others. Resolution increasing the maximum income limit for eligibility in the property tax freeze program provides financial assistance to low income elderly residents of Metropolitan National Davis County beginning in tax year 2024. Councilman Parker, you recognized. 
Yes. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, budget uh, committee, Council Member Gamble. Finance. This is uh, 2159. Thank you. But in finance, recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Uh, back to you, Council Member Parker. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and I, I appreciate um, letting this come off uh, consent. I, I don't like to bring things off consent, but I think in this case it's it's warranted. Um, this is something that this council has been um, supportive of since 2020 when we were facing the large tax increase. We passed a resolution um, asking the state legislature to um, enable this increase in the income cap for our tax freeze program from, I think it's at 47 500 today to 60,000 is what we landed at. Um, and I wanted to pull it off consent to do a couple of things. And one of those is to recognize uh, the efforts of my state rep, um, Harold Love, in getting this done. Um, we're super duper appreciative of his work up at the state and um, Senator Akbari and others who, who got this done. And also we have um, Erica, Gil Trustee Erica Gilmore, if she's still here, um, whose, whose office will be sort of administering the program. Um, and I additionally wanted to just take the opportunity to highlight that this change is happening. Um, this is something that I've talked with a lot of constituents about who would love to be able to utilize the program, but they're just not under the previous cap. So we all have newsletters, we all have community meetings, we all have opportunities to connect with our constituents. And I really um, uh, hope that we'll all take those opportunities. I hope that we'll work with um, Trustee Gilmore's office to get the word out that this increase is happening. Um, we have an assessment coming up in 2025 that's going to capture the pandemic property boom. Um, and I think that getting to our constituents um, Ahead of that is going to be really important for some of our lower income seniors. Um, and, you know, I think the, the, the message that I kind of want to share with everyone tonight is, um, you know, Nashville's going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to see um, appreciation. But we, we, this body, I think, will continue to do everything that we can to make sure that we're not growing on the backs of our uh, vulnerable citizens, our, our lower income seniors and whatnot. Um, and so I thank all our partners and in, in giving us the ability to, to make this change today. And I also, um, without objection, would like to call for the Murphy rule to be applied here um, and have everyone who is voting in the affirmative here today added as co-sponsors to this legislation. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. I will apply the Murphy rule. Um, so I've got a, a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Again, um, and I've got people in the queue. Councilmember Sawara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to stand in support of this as well. Uh, we all know how frustrating it was uh, when we were trying to raise taxes. And what this does is that for those that are 65 and older, it freezes their property taxes to where no matter what happened in the future, they will not pay any more than what they're paying when they qualify. And I think for retirees and elderly people that have fixed income, I think this is a very good tool and a very good thing. Uh, I wish it's more than, the, the threshold is higher than 60,000, uh, but it's a lot better than what we had before, which was uh, 47,000, so I, I I encourage everyone to please put it out, those that qualify to please uh, apply and to make sure that we continue to to use this. This is a, a very good tool and I'm, I'm very grateful <laughs> that we have it. It's a little one, but it's better than nothing and we need to push it and I agree with Council Member Parker that we all have a responsibility to make sure that it's being used and that people know about it and that people are taking advantage of it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, want to give a few shout outs here, uh, certainly to our colleague, Councilmember Parker, for leading on this. This is, to his point, important. I uh, want to celebrate uh, Representative Love's leadership in getting this done uh, for Tennessee and strongly encourage colleagues to support, which I'm sure we will. I uh, want to celebrate the efforts of the trustee um, as her successor in District 19, um, we learned, especially back then, that we had a lot of people that were eligible um, and really appreciate her leadership on this. Her office has been uh, very proactive in the outreach process to encourage enrollment. Um, and I want to actually celebrate uh, Councilmember Sledge uh, because I learned from an initiative he took uh, last term 
uh, just some simple techniques to try to identify people who might be able to participate in this, uh, figuring out where people who might be um, old enough uh, to participate in, in census tracts where uh, incomes might be determined. And we, I'm confident that we increase the number of people uh, participating in the program, not to mention uh, organizations like NOAA that took this seriously. To Councilmember Parker's point, this is an important uh, protection against rising property values, which carries with them rising property taxes, and we do not want the city itself to be the engine of displacement. Uh, so again, renewing the call for colleagues to support and celebrating the leadership of those that have come before and we'll continue after this. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Council Member Hart. Thank you. I too uh, want to just stand and say, Council Member um, O'Connell uh, basically indicated the, the efforts that had been made prior to and, and making sure that we had the right people uh, at the table working to ensure that this happened. So I want to congratulate uh, Trustee Gilmore on her leadership, um, my pastor and our representative, Harold Love, as well as Councilmember Parker uh, for leading this and making it happen because the efforts prior to we did not have the same success. So I'm grateful to see that this has been a long time coming and we finally got uh, some success. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Hart. Council Member Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I really do not want to miss an opportunity to praise Council Member, Par Member Parker and Member Council Member Sledge when I have the opportunity. So. Uh, Thank you so much for doing this, and you may not believe it, but there's uh, plenty of people in my district who take advantage of this. And having walked that walk with them, I understand just exactly how important this is and what a big difference it makes. So I appreciate you guys for doing all, and all the work that you did, and I just wanted to give you that shout out. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council Member Swope. Previous question. <laughs> Council Member Swope has called the previous question. Um, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Yes. Opposed, no. Previous question is adopted. We are now uh, voting on uh, item number item number four, RS 2023-2159. Uh, for um, If you're for it, you vote aye. If you're against it, you vote no. Let's try by voice vote. All those in favor of RS 2023-2159 for passes say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the resolution passes and everybody voting uh, everybody voting in here is going to be listed as a sponsor. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. We're now on number five, RS 2023-2160. By Councilmember Roten and Gamble, resolution appropriating the amount of $34,850,600 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metropolitan Government. Uh, Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 10 and 12 in favor, zero against. All right, uh, and um, since you're the sponsor, uh, just move for approval. Move for approval. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Uh, Councilor Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so this is, um, we've had several of these supplemental appropriations um, in recent years for equipment and vehicles. Um, I, I was wondering from the administration folks, um, so so there's an issue that I've been kind of um, harping on for the last couple of years, which is our um, lack of uh, a towing contractor, our abandoned vehicle program. Um, and I wondered, is there anything in this appropriation that will help equipment wise um, for us to have tow trucks to get abandoned vehicles out of the public right away and whatnot? Who wants to handle that one? It's, well, okay, so I, I, it's okay if um, nobody would like to, I am fairly certain that it doesn't. Um, and I've been asking for some kind of appropriation or something to address our lack of um, towing capacity in Metro. Um, we put out, an, the, the answer that I got was, Let's put out an RFP. We put one out, nobody responded. We put another one out that was a little bit different. Nobody responded again. So, you know, we're, 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 this is a basic governmental function. You know, we're putting so many resources. We want all our departments to be adequately 
resourced. We want folks to have the stuff they need to get things done. But there's a really fundamental um, governmental function, which is keeping the public right of way um, clear and safe of, of abandoned vehicles and we're not getting it done. Um, the, the, the tack we've taken is not getting it done. And I would love for these opportunities we have with supplemental appropriations to address an issue like that. Um, so I guess that's just an ask for maybe the next round of supplemental appropriations. Can we get a couple of tow trucks? Can we get some folks designated as handling this essential government function? So um, I guess that's just an ask for the next one more than it is about this one. Thanks. All right, administration, you got that? Okay. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. And um, we've got other people. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you. Just a quick question to that. I, I would I would be interested to know the comparative value of owning the trucks and hiring the people as opposed to having a number that we call in. And, and maybe that's different from an RFP to do the entire contract, but just are there six tow trucks that we can call and they do it? Because I thought that was the way it worked. I'd, I'd be interested in... in um, as we look into that possibility of, of adding the, the actual fleet equipment to comparing that with what is what does it cost for us just to pay for having it done or we've tried that and it didn't work, but I like that question answered. Okay. Another thing for the, do uh, you want to respond, Ms. Houser? So this is via Kristen Wilson. So uh, with 4% money being equipment, um, it, it is an appropriate spend like on the equipment, but not the services piece. We tend to do it through contracting. Uh, the council member is correct. We have RFP'd this out twice uh, with no responses. And I have asked um, Metro to figure out since we've had no responses to that RFP, what is our plan? So I have asked for that, but I just asked for it like today. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, council member Allen, anything else? Okay. Council member Swope. Uh, all right, uh, nobody else in the queue. Any other questions on this one? We are ready, ready to vote. We're on RS 2023-2160. Uh, there's been a motion to approve and again, properly seconded. Ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2023-2160 for passes say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes, all right? We are now on item number nine. Uh, Councilmember Toombs, if you could come up. All right, item number nine, resolution 2023-2164, sponsors wrote in Syracuse, Swar, Hurt, and others, a resolution appropriating a total of 137,000 from a certain account of the community safety fund for a grant to the contributor incorporated. Uh, Council Mayor Syracuse, you recognize. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, Move approval. <laughs> committee report. Uh, committee reports. Uh, I need budget and finance. Um, Councilwoman Gamble. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Budget and finance recommended approval. 12 in favor, zero against. Councilmember Sir. Thank you, Pro Tem. Public health and safety recommended approval. Nine in favor, zero against. And I would move approval. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, next item is um, item number 20. Uh, it's RS 2023-2175 by council members Roden, Syracuse, and Suara. It's a resolution approving amendments one and two to a grant for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide for the prevention, surveillance, diagnosis, and treatment of HIV AIDS and to administer a minority AIDS initiative program. Council member um, Syracuse, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, I got budget and finance, council member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Which number is this? I'm sorry. Uh, it is uh, 2175. It's item number 20. Okay, great. 2175. 
Budget and Finance recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against, one abstention. Okay, and uh, back to Public Health and Safety, Councilmember Syracuse. Public Health and Safety recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against, and I move approval. Okay, I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Hart, do you have to be uh, listed as abstaining? We're on item number 20, R is 2023-2175. All right, so um, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one is adopted, and Councilmember Hurt will be listed as abstaining. Okay. Uh, next item is item number 27, RS 2023 2182. Councilmember Withers and Pulley, resolution authorizing cannery owner LLC, cannery investment LLC, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 521A 8th Avenue South. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I need to withdraw this item. It's okay. being replaced by an ordinance. Okay, this one is withdrawn. All right. Uh, next one is item number 32, RS 2023-2187 by Councilmember Evans and Stiles. Resolution urging, urging the Mayor's Office, Metro Health Department, Metro Homeless Impact Division, Metro Social Services to evaluate housing pods purchased with COVID-19 epidemiology and laboratory capacity grant funds and create an action plan for their use. Councilmember Evans, you're recognized. Um, I'm going to move to defer for one meeting. Okay, I think this one is an automatic deferral anyway. Uh, were there committee reports on this one? Public Health and Safety, yes. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Public Health and Safety uh, recommended one meeting deferral. Okay, rules and confirmations, Councilmember Murphy. I'm in favor, favor zero against. zero against on deferral. Okay, so Councilmember Evans, it's an automatic deferral, so it's uh, deferred one meeting, okay? All right, uh, next one up is, that is the last one up. All right, on uh, resolution. So we have a late resolution. Uh, this would be listed as um, I-1. Uh, it's a resolution affirming the protection of Fort Negley. Council Member Allen, you are recognized. Yes. Here you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I need to suspend the rules and get a committee report from rules. Council Member Murphy. Uh, did, uh, you were okay with the, um, okay, so you were uh, okay with um, uh, suspending the rules. All right, Councilmember Allen is moving to suspend the rules. Uh, is there an objection to suspension of the rules on this one? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your late file resolution. Uh, thank you. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. All right, Councilmember Allen has moved for approval of uh, this resolution. Um, properly seconded back to you. Thank you. This is just a resolution recognizing the uh, the work that's gone into master planning for Fort Negley and just stating that we're going to uh, be uh, diligent about developing that uh, that that park area according to the master plan. And uh, there's a ceremony tomorrow that we wanted it to be ready in time for. So that's why it's here tonight. All right. So you've heard the explanation of the resolution again, properly seconded. Any discussion on it? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution by Councilmember Allen say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, we are now on uh, bills on introduction and first reading. We'll take them all up at the same time unless something needs to be bumped off. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. I need to pull item number 36, please. Okay, item number 36 is being pulled off of bills on introduction and first reading. Anything else needs to be pulled off? All right, um, we'll take everything else at the same time and then come back and deal with item number 36. Can I have a motion to approve all bills on internet? Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of bills on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Council Member Sledge? No, oh, but sorry, I was trying to pull one off. That's fine, we'll take care of it on second. Okay. All right, um, so um, we were right in the middle of the vote, so I think everything was uh, in favor, opposed, uh, just say no. All right, bills uh, bills on introduction, first reading pass. Uh, we're now on item number 36, bill 2023-1858 by Council Member Withers. It's an ordinance amending Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by the leading section 17.32.020B3 and 17.40.510C and adding new language in those sections clarifying that signs regulated by the Metropolitan Department of Codes are to be maintained so that all signed parcels remain complete and intact. Council Member Withers, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. For this one, I need to add a substitute, then move it on first, and then defer second reading until the first meeting in August. So oh. just as a preview. All right, let's get the substitute on there first, and then we can worry about the rest of it. Um, Council Member Withers is moving the substitute, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Uh, the, the, uh, 
if you would, wouldn't mind recognizing Mr. Wilkinson. Mr. Wilkinson, you recognize at the planning table. Yep. The substitute just adds a proposal number um, that was omitted when it was sent over to be introduced. It also updates the enacting language to our current language to make it in line with every other bill we do. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Withers, you recognize So it's housekeeping, but I uh, would, would like to move the substitute. All right, so Councilmember Withers is moving the substitute on BL 2023-1858. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's on. You're on your bill as substitute, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to defer the second reading until the first meeting in August. Okay, so what you want to do is pass it on first reading tonight and then defer second reading until the first meeting in August. Yes, please. Is that it? Okay, everybody got that? Properly seconded. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion um, to approve tonight and then have second reading on the first meeting in August, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right. <clears throat> um, I think that takes care of some bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, we have two late bills. That's under item K, uh, BL 2023 by Council Members Roten and Withers. Um, and let's take that one up first. This is an ordinance adopting the 2023, 2024 through 2028, 2029 capital improvements budget of the Metropolitan Government is the official capital improvements budget of the Metropolitan Government of National Dennis County for fiscal year 2023, 2024. Council Member Withers, you're recognized on this late bill. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Is it appropriate to call on the committee report from rules? Sure. Uh, Council Member Murphy. Per the usual, we are okay with this. This is All right. what we do every year. All right. Council Member Weathers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. I'd just like to move approval on uh, first reading. Uh, you're going to need to move to suspend the rules on this one to get it just in front of us. Uh, Council Member Weathers is moving to suspend the rules to get um, the capital improvements budget in front of us um, tonight. Any objection? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your bill. Thank you. I'd like to renew my motion to approve on first reading. Okay, so uh, the motion is to approve on first reading bill 2023-1880. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, we're on uh, item K2. It's uh, by Council Member O'Connell. It's an ordinance authorizing Cannery Owner LLC, Cannery Owner Investment One LLC to install, construct, and maintain encroachments in the right of way located at 521A 8th Avenue South and 1 Cannery Row. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I will need to move to suspend the rules, please. All right. Council Member Murphy. You're uh, all good. Okay. Uh, Council Member O'Connell is moving to suspend the rules. Uh, any objections to suspension of the rules to get this one before us tonight? Seeing none, a rules are suspended. Councilmember O'Connell, you're on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Brief comment. All right. So Councilmember O'Connell has moved approval properly. Seconded back to you for um, comment. Thank you. Uh, this was filed in a way that I think had a, an administrative error associated with it uh, through no fault of the applicant. And as a result of that, wanted to make sure that we got this filed. The type of encroachment is what determined whether or not it would be a single reading resolution or a three reading bill. Uh, and since this was not the fault of the applicant on the timeliness of it, I wanted to go ahead and make sure uh, that they could proceed on their timeline and encourage colleagues to support. Thank you. All right. So there's a motion to approve um, this item K2 by Council Member O'Connell uh, for um, passage on first reading tonight. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, we are now on bills on second reading. Uh, we do have a second reading consent calendar. Items on second reading consent are Bill 2023-1862, item number 54. Item number 55, BL 2023-1863. Item number 56, BL 2023-1864. And BL 2023-1865. Um, anything needs to be bumped off consent? 
seeing none. Okay, here we go. BL 2023-1862 by Councilmember Murphy. It's an ordinance readopting the code prepared by the Municipal Code Corporation, including supplemental replacement pages uh, containing certain ordinances of a general permit nature enacted on or before December 22nd, 2022. Uh, BL 2023-1863, item number 55, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main sanitary sewer manholes needs of five properties located on Split Log Road and Bennington Place in Williamson County, also known as Twab Subdivision. Uh, item number 56, BL 2023-1864 by Councilmember Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public pan the sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements. Property located at 2928 Moppin Road in Williamson County, also known as the Moppin Subdivision. And item number 57, BL 2023-1865 by Councilmember Sledge, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes. Property located at 2108 12th Avenue South, also known as Alley 951 Sewer Extension. Anything needs to be bumped off that second reading consent calendar. All right, seeing none, I've got a couple of committee reports in. Budget and Finance, Council Member Gamble. I need one on 1859 and 1860. Thank you, Vice Mayor. 1859, Budget and Finance recommend approval, 12 in favor, zero against. 1860, recommend approval, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Withers. Planning and Zoning. Um, planning and zoning met and considered. Uh, were 1859 and 1860 on consent? 1859 and 1860 were on consent. You've got 1863, 64, and 65. Okay, well. Um, uh, 18, um, I've got 1859 and 1860. But you know what? I had no they're, vote. They're not on. They're not on yeah. consent. I, I just wanted to check and make sure. Okay. So, um, we did have for sure uh, 1863, 1864, and 1865, and each of those was recommended for approval. Seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Thank you. Rules and confirmation. 1862. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Murphy. You good? 1862. Oh yeah, no, sorry, that was on that was on consent. Five in favor, zero against. Right. Okay. And then transportation infrastructure, Councilmember Pulley. Hey, Mr. Vice Mayor, transportation infrastructure recommended approval. BL 2023-1863 through 1865. Seven in favor, zero against. And I move approval of the consent agenda. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Pulley. Councilmember Pulley has moved for approval of the second reading consent agenda. Properly seconded. Any discussion on second reading consent? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, now we'll go back and pick up the bills that were not on second reading consent. The first one is BL 2023-1857 by Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend section 10.68.02 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to fireworks. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee report, please. Uh, public safety, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Health and Safety considered Bill 2023-1857, uh, and we rec recommended a one-meeting deferral as amended. We passed the amendment, but then we recommended a one-meeting deferral. Thank you. All right. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg? I think it's an automatic deferral. That's what yeah, do I, we don't do the amendment tonight. We just deal with it next time. You can okay. deal with it yeah. next time. All right. Okay, so it's automatically deferred in one meeting. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next item is item number 51, BL 2023-1859 by Council Members Withers and Roten. An ordinance approving a lease agreement bind between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting bind through the Metropolitan Board of Education and Nashville Classical Charter School. Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Mr. Vice Mayor, committee reports, please. All right. Uh, budget and finance, mm -hmm. Council Member Gamble, I think you already gave us this yeah, one. That's 12, okay. Do it again. 1859, 12 in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Planning and zoning. Uh, well, I'll go to education. Council Member Suarez, you've got this one. Education is uh, voted for 1859, four in favor, one against, zero All right. abstention. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And planning and zoning, Council Member Withers, you got the last one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning recommended approval, five in favor, two against, zero not voting. All right. Council Member Withers. With that, I'd like to renew my uh, motion to approve. Okay, this is a motion to approve 2023-1859 on second reading properly, seconded discussion. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, my question about this is, you know, coming off of the, the lengthy debates, discussions, research about the Titans lease and whatnot, um, you know, on this, I believe this one's for eight years. If who's responsible, if someone from maybe the administration can answer this, like who's responsible for 
you know, capital um, improvements, needed needed upgrades, like let's say the HVAC system goes out, like is Metro as the landlord on the hook for replacing that stuff during the life of this lease? Do you want us to repeat the question? Well, if we have somebody from MN. Oh, is there someone from schools here or, or something? From the chart. Um, who is that person? Everybody okay if um, he represents the mayor's office in terms of answering that question? Sure. Okay. So here with someone from MNPS. I, I need, I want someone from the Council our Mayor side. To... <laughs> I wasn't trying to, I just. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. But no, I was, we, as the, as the, um, person who the owns the property, as the, the entity that owns the property, I would like someone representing us to answer this question, please. All right, the well, gentleman Mr. Behind Mr. Brom does represent Metro National Public thank, Schools. Thank, 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 thank. Are you all okay with allowing uh, them to answer? Okay, yeah. Mr. Brom, you're right. Uh, yes, my name is David Brom with uh, Metro National Public Schools. Uh, for any of those repairs, public schools would cover those costs. Okay, um, thank you. Um, <laughs> Well, Excuse me. So, uh, Mr. Brom, you're the only one who can respond. So. Well, and yeah. I was told that it, it, under this agreement, Nashville Classic would cover 50% of the response as well. So they would they would cover 50%, and then Metro Nashville Public Schools would cover the other 50. Okay. Um, so, the, it, it, you know, with, it, with it, I guess what I'm concerned about is, like, this is an eight-year term, um, both, like, long-term planning for the district, like, if there's a need for the district to expand into that facility and also with eight years of wear and tear going on a facility and then us going on the hook for all the um, maintenance and whatnot, I'm, I'm a little, that's just, that's what gives me pause here. And I, I, I uh, is this a typical lease length for yeah. a facility? I mean, I don't know. It just, it seems, it seems, I don't want to get in a situation like we did with the Titan Stadium with all these like long-term leases we're signing with, with private entities. Um, where we're having to pay for all this stuff. We're looking at the lease agreement. This is the line. They're, they're, they're checking. We'll hold, the time. we'll hold the time. Chris Hauser, you're recognized. So I'm looking at the agreement and it ends on June 30, 2033. So it's a 10 year lease. I need to look through the, usually there is an escape clause if you know you give the party the notice. There is a renewal clause. So I think Councilmember Parker is asking more specific questions about about termination. But I don't think it's about termination. It's about uh, who pays for different costs. Yeah, our obligations for maintenance, which we just had a very long conversation as a city over regarding uh, another long-term lease that we have with a private entity. There's an improvement section in section H of the lease that says MMPS shall not be required to make any other improvements, repairs, modifications whatsoever on the premises hereby leased. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Thanks, section 8A. Councilmember Benedict says section 8A has something relevant to this. Gosh, I'm trying to do this with my left hand. Section 8A is the lesser's obligation. I was reading from 8H. So the lesser's obligation is major replacement of major building system components and capital repairs. It does define what those building systems are, which uh, gets to your original question around HVAC. Um, it gets into valves and glazing systems and repair cost. It does say it has a multiplier effect, and Mr. Brom, if you want to, if you have anything to add to this, it discusses how the square foot is multiplied by 40%. There's a fraction that 
dealing with? Is that dealing with depreciation and what you pay? Regarding one, one, to one point I'd like to point Mr. out that Mr. Have, Brom, let me recognize oh, you. Councilman Parker, you okay with me going back yes, to Mr. Brom? Mr. Brom? Sorry, sorry, Vice Mayor. Uh, one aspect is we share this building with this charter school. So half of the building is used by MNPS, the other half is used by the charter school. That's part of the responsibility piece, but also uh, it makes it a little bit different than our other leases with charters. So we are there with them and they are our tenant. If, if I may ask a question. Sure, Thank you, Mr. So, so is, is that what's led to the 50% split on this particular lease and then in other charter leases or just leases MNPS does with other private entities, are those 100% uh, lessee's responsibilities? I believe for this lease, uh, Councilmember Parker, that's the case. And for the other ones, I believe you're correct, but I can find out and get back with you on that. Okay, yeah, thank you. That. Well, I, I wasn't aware that this is split, um, that it's used by MNPS and the, the private entity. So um, that makes me a little bit more comfortable with the, the arrangement here. So thank you all for, for doing your best to answer those questions. All right, uh, Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you. Just a quick question for the representative from MMPS. So, with MMPS sharing this space, why why are they sharing it? Is it just they were not utilizing it fully for MMPS service purposes, or can you kind of elaborate why this building is being split? between the two entities? It, it was formerly a middle school that was moved out and to another middle school uh, and that space became available. Uh, and then we are using it for uh, other things and have had that open space so that the building won't be empty. We're leasing it to them. But it was a, formerly a middle school and that middle school was combined, I believe with Stratford Middle School. Okay, thank you. I, I just, I mean, anyone who's followed me this term knows I have serious issues when it comes to spending taxpayer dollars for what is essentially amounts to private schools that do not adhere to the authority of our duly elected school board. So I'm gonna be voting up on this tonight. Okay, all right, um, Cass, Councilor Murphy. Thank you, I, I just wanted to voice my concern that um, there are issues coming up tonight that were asked of MNPS and Ms. Rahm, we have a great relationship. I respect you greatly. But that they that there seems to be, there was a little confusion on that contract on the part of MMPS. And I, I am wondering if, if that had um, come up in committee or whether that needs to be more clarified. The, the mayor's office had, had you know, was, was searching through there. And I just wanna make sure that we have, these are long-term leases. These are um, charter schools that compete for the same students that our traditional schools are. Um, I saw recently a parent who posted about their charter school having a great ad on, a, on an MTA bus stop, yet the, the art class had been canceled. Now, I, I don't wanna say whether that was fact or not, that was a parent opinion posting that on social media, but but this is, this gets to the crux of like, charter schools, our traditional schools, who's paying the bills, and, and to be on the floor. Um, I appreciate the councilman from District 5 asking these questions, because I, I think these are the facts that need to come out prior to to the, getting to this point. Our, our school our school board does a great job at trying to keep this in place, but this is a new check and balance. This is in, what in the last year or two that, that we are getting to vote on these leases. And so I, I think a robust discussion like that is important. And so I appreciate the councilman from district five bringing that up um, because I think it's, it's a little concerning that there was a little confusion on, on that answer. All right, thank you council member, council member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, to the earlier point, I want to make clear that sharing the building does not mean that there are actually MNPS students in the building. Um, I'm a little, I'm very concerned that we have the lessor here getting fed answers to these questions from the lessee and think we need dependable information, especially considering this isn't amendable on third reading. So I'd move for a one meeting deferral and right. a re-referral to committees. All right, so Council Member Rosenberg has moved for a one meeting deferral with a re-referral back to those uh, three committees. It's been properly seconded. Discussion on the deferral. And I've got people in the queue, so if you want to speak on the deferral, raise your hand. Council Member Pulley is first. Council Member Pulley on the deferral. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to make the point that, uh, you know, it seems like we are having a committee meeting on the floor. This did go to committee. So the reason for the deferral is these questions weren't asked at committee. So I just want to make the point that uh, having a committee meeting on the floor here to ask these questions may be why where we are now. Maybe if we'd had been at the budget committee asking these questions yesterday, we'd have these answers. So uh, that's all I'd have to say. I'm not going to speak out against the deferral. I'll, I just want to make that point. That's on Councilor Pulliam. I, I, I think that's um, a good comment. So we do want these things issued or ironed out at the committees if we can. Councilmember Vercher, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I don't want this this re, this lease renewal to become polarized. At the end of the day, these are kids. Charter schools are not private schools. I'm a parent of a private school graduate, and I know that charter school parents did not pay the tuition that I paid for my son to attend Franklin Road Academy. So I just want to want to start there because I know a lot of people are viewing this, but we need to just stay grounded in this. This is about kids, and we don't need to create any additional uncertainty for families that's exercising their right to seek out better educational opportunities for, for their respective kids. Can't remember what we're I'm, I'm sorry, deferral. deferral. So I'm asking colleagues to keep kids at the center of this and vote against a deferral. Okay. Anybody else on the deferral? Councilmember Gamble, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would also like to speak then and against the deferral. This was uh, discussed in the budget committee, and representatives from the school gave very good information about the the agreement uh, with Metro Schools. And I'm not sure what the the purpose of the deferral uh, would be, and maybe I, I missed it in the discussion. But I don't feel like there's it's necessary to defer this uh, for further discussion that wasn't already discussed. So I, I guess, and maybe somebody can speak, what, what new information are we looking for uh, that would warrant a deferral? deferral? But I would speak against the deferral. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you. Council Member Nash, you're recognized. I was just curious, will the deferral somehow sidetrack the agreement will another couple of weeks make it, or three weeks make a difference in uh, how you proceed forward? I think that's at the will of the will of the council. So it, it won't bother you to wait another three weeks. Uh, There's not moving vans already loaded, ready to go. I, I believe that a Nashville Classic is already in the building, oh, and this okay. is a renewal of a lease. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. On the deferral. Gotcha. Okay. Councilmember Benedict, you're recognized. Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. So in. In District 7, East End Prep uh, was, uh, we had that lease come before us, and this body was able to negotiate better than the agreement that was originally. So, again, sorry. just on a deferral. And so I think that a deferral would give us the opportunity to improve this and also get answers to some of the questions that were asked earlier. So I am supportive of the deferral. I think it's a great opportunity for us to make sure this is the best deal for our taxpayers. Uh, Councilmember Hancock. <laughs> So I'm on the education committee and we did discuss this at length today. We had a representative from the district where the school is that testified as to the reason the school is vacant and why it's an, a, a revenue source for Metro Nashville Public Schools. The Metro School Board voted on it unanimously. I'm supportive of our Metro School Board and I'm supportive of moving this forward tonight. Okay, thank you. Anybody, uh, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also would speak against the deferral. I would add to what uh, Councilmember uh, Pulley has said that also the, the analysis spoke to this and we have, uh, since we have begun to scrutinize these more carefully, there is a market analysis done for each of those that looks at similar, um, similar structures with similar uses um, so that this is now very data-based and I don't know that, that there's an opportunity to negotiate um, when we've had a third party that's come back and said this is this is um, what we recommend and my understanding is that that's actually bumped up just a small amount above what the recommendations from the third party independent market analysis for so I believe we have the information we need to move forward tonight all right uh, Councilmember Rutherford 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this goes to um, Council Member uh, Nash's point. Uh, I, I believe there is a, a current lease that expires uh, June 30th. And so that is, uh, could potentially be problematic. And so I rise in, in uh, against the deferral. All right, Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna speak very, very, very strongly against deferral. This school has been in the East Nashville community since before I was elected. At that time, it was recommended by the school board at that time at a different building. This lease was voted and had the support at that time of school board members Christian Bugs as well as Jill Spearing. And I think the latter is not known as being a fan of charters, but she did vote in favor of it. And I think that speaks volumes. The present school board member who is uh, school board member masters has been very effective in working with MNPS to negotiate this. And we have our own staff who have also been very diligent in negotiating this. This has been discussed in committees. Some of the members who are today wanting additional information were present in committees. I have some of them recorded as a no, and that is fine. But during our committee meetings, where some of these members were present and took the time to vote no, they could have taken the time to have read the lease or read the analysis or simply asked a question of the people who were actually present to answer their questions. So I speak very strongly against a deferral today. If you wanna vote no, just vote no. But please do not hold my community hostage to political games. So I'm against a deferral. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Withers. Anybody else on the deferral? Councilmember Parker on the deferral. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna speak in favor of the deferral. Um, the questions that I raised this evening, I, you know, I apologize for not getting those into committee, um, are um, I think important ones. Um, we've seen very recently what happens when we don't have the maintenance and improvement side of an agreement fully fleshed out and taking the opportunity to do that here I think would be good. If we come back in two weeks and this thing is not amendable um, and the answers to those questions are not satisfactory, then I, I think we're at risk of the thing not passing. Um, that's, I guess, kind of the worst case scenario. Um, so I, I don't see the harm in sending it back to committee personally, um, getting those questions answered, and I will be happy to attend um, all of those committee meetings if we do end up deferring this and re-referring it tonight. So can I speak in favor of the deferral? Okay, all right, anybody else on the deferral motion? All right, so here's what we're doing. We're voting on a motion by Councilmember Rosenberg to defer one meeting and re-refer uh, this measure back to three committees. It's budget and finance, planning and zoning and education. It was properly seconded. So we're on the deferral motion. If you're for the deferral, you would vote aye. If you're against it, you're gonna vote no. Uh, because of the nature of the comments, I think we have to go on the board. Mr. Clark, if you would. It's a motion to defer one meeting and re-refer to committees. Ready? Uh, open up the machines. Everybody in? Okay. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Uh, eight ayes, noes, 19, three abstentions. The motion fails. We're back on the, um, the bill on second reading. Councilman Withers, uh, this is um, to approve on second reading. Jory made the motion to approve and properly seconded. Would like to renew my motion to approve. Okay, so we've got still people in the queue. I'm gonna go back to it. Councilmember Swope, you're, let me make sure. Councilmember Swope has called the previous question on the bill. Previous question, just on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed no. No. Previous question prevails. We are voting on the measure. Um, let's try by voice vote. 
uh, we are voting on uh, BL 2023-1859 for passage on second reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, this one passes on second reading. Okay. We are now on item number 52, BL 2023-1860 by council members Roberts, R Roten, and Withers. It's an ordinance approving a lease agreement bind between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County acting bind through the Metropolitan Board of Education and Nashville PrEP. Council member uh, Withers, this will be yours as well. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, committee reports, please. All right, uh, budget and finance, council member Gamble, you're recognized. Budget and finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. Education, council member Sawara. Uh, council member Toombs, or can somebody just look over, do you know what it is? Council member Hancock, council member Hancock. Here, hold on, here you go. Councilmember Hancock. Education voted in favor, four in favor, one opposed. Okay, thank you. And then uh, planning and zoning, council member Withers, you've got that one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning recommended approval. Five in favor, two against, zero not voting. All right, and Councilmember Withers, it's all yours. On behalf of Councilmember Mary Carolyn Roberts, I would like to move approval. Okay, so Councilmember Withers is moving approval of Bill 2023 1860 for passage on second reading, properly seconded. Discussion on the bill. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Bill 2023 1860 for passage on second reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on second reading. BL 2023-1860 passes on second reading. All right, um, we're now on item number 53, BL 2023-1861 by council members Toombs, Roten, Hurt, and Suara. Uh, this is an ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County acting through the Department of Parks and Recreation and Tennessee Football, Inc. to allow Tennessee Football, Inc. to establish a program campaign to support efforts to make improvements to the Luby Community Center. Council member Toombs, this is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report? Uh, budget and finance, uh, council member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval of the bill as amended. Ten in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. And Public Facilities Council Member Hurd. We're on Bill 2023-1861. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Facilities, Arts and Culture voted um, six in favor and zero against for the amendment um, as well as the bill. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Council Member Toombs. You're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment. All right. So, Council Member Toombs has moved an amendment to Bill 2023 1861, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. The amendment clarifies the expectations of, for Tennessee Football Inc. in terms of capital improvements to the Luby Center. Okay. You've heard an explanation of the amendment. Any questions regarding the amendment? All right. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendments adopted. You're on your bill as amended. Move for approval as amended. All right. So Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval of Bill 2023-1861 as amended for passage on second reading. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill as amended for adoption on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. This one is passed on second reading. All right. And that takes care of... All the bills on second reading. All right, we're now on bills on third reading. We do have a consent calendar on third reading. Um, <clears throat> first bill up on consent would be bill 2023-1691. It's item number 60. That's on consent. 1793 is on consent. 1803 is on consent. 1807 is on consent. 1808 on consent, 1809 on consent, 1811 on consent, 1812 on consent, 1813 on consent, 1819 on consent, 1822 on consent, 1823 on consent, and 1824 is the companion, it's on consent. 1825 is on consent, and the companion bill 1826 is on consent, 1827 is on consent, and the companion to that, item 78, is on consent, that's 1828. 1830 is on consent. 1831 is on consent. 1832, the companion is on consent. 1833 is on consent, 1835 is on consent, 1836 is on consent. All 
Okay. Um, 1837, item number 86 is on consent. 1839 is on consent. I think 1840 has to come off. Okay, 1840 comes off. 1841 is on consent. 1842 is on consent. 1843 is on consent. 1844 is on consent. 1845 is on consent. 1846 is on consent. 1847 is on consent. 1848 is on consent. 1849 is on consent. 1850 is on consent. <clears throat> 1851 is on consent. 1852 is on consent. 1853 is on consent, 1854 is on consent, 1855 is on consent, and 1856 is on consent. All right, so a lot of bills on consent. Let's go back. Councilmember Bradford, uh, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanna pull, I believe it's 1793 from consent. Okay, let's make sure we've got it. 1793, which is... Um, item number 61. Item number 61 is pulled. Okay. Um, and Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to pull items 85 and 86. That's 1836 and 1837, please. Okay, items 85 and 86 yes. are also pulled off of consent. <coughs> Okay, and um, 1830, which is a companion bill to item number 79, we're gonna pull, okay? So item 80 is pulled. Uh, Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I apologize, did you say that, now my agenda's disappeared, uh, number 58, item 1471, was that on consent? The very first. Uh, the very bill. first one is not on consent. Okay, thank you, okay. sir. And uh, Councilmember Cash, did you have a question, Councilmember Cash? You good? Yep. Okay. All right. Anybody, Councilmember Rosenberg, you're still on the board. Anything else? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? There's cake in the kitchen. It's a birthday cake for me. I do have a question. All right. Yeah. Figured. All right, so we're not anymore. All right, so um, we're gonna go through this um, slowly and make sure that we've got this right, all right? All right, the first bill I have up on the consent is a bill 2023-1691 by Councilmember Johnston and Henderson, ordinance amending section 17.12.030 of the Metropolitan Code, zoning regulations regarding street setbacks and building orientation for residential corner lots. Uh, next item up is item number 62, BL 2023-1803 by council members Cash, Withers, and Pulley. It's an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water mains, relocate a fire hydrant, fire hydrant assembly, and to accept new public water mains for two properties located at 2600 Jess Neely Drive and 2555 West End Avenue, also known as Vanderbilt University Basketball Facility. Item number 63, BL 2023-1807 by council member Syracuse, ordinance amend title 17 by changing from RS10 to RS15 SP zoning on properties located at 4340 Longfellow Drive and 2646 Lock 2 Road, current terminus of Longfellow Drive, partially located within plan unit development overlay district. Item number 64, BL 2023-1808 by Council Member Syracuse, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a, a portion of a planned unit development overlay district probably located at 2646 Lock 2 Road, north of Cane Harbor Road, zoned RS10. Um, item number 65, BL 2023-1809 by Parker, Benedict, and Weathers, ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a portion of an institutional overlay for various properties on both sides of Galton Avenue, north of Douglas Avenue, located within the National Auto Diesel College Institutional Overlay District. Uh, next item up on consent is item number 67. It's BL 2023-1811 by Council Member Syracuse. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan on property located at 2850 Lebanon Pike, southwest of Munn Road, zoned SP, and located at the Downtown Donaldson Urban Design Overlay. Next item is item number 68, BL 2023-1812 by Council Member Syracuse. 
that is uh, the companion bill, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023-1811. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in construction of buildings. Next item up is item number 69, BL 2023-1813 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1717 Luton Street, approximately 450 feet south of East Trinity Lane. <coughs> Uh, next one up I've got is item number 71, BL 2023-1819 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to RM9A NS zoning for property located at 322 Alberta Street, uh, 260 feet east of Millensville Pike. Uh, next one up is item number 72. BL 2023 1822 by Councilmember O'Connell. Ordinance amend Title 17 by Canceling Urban Design Overlay District. Properties located at 1609 McGavick Street, 115 16th Avenue South, and 114 116 17th Avenue South, approximately 120 feet northwest of Division Street Zone CF. Uh, next item up is Item number 73, Bill 2023-1823 by Council Member Van Rees. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan for properties located at 272, 288, and 296 Broadmoor Drive, 329, 341, and 349 Van Allen Road, west of Ellington Parkway, zoned SP. Item number 74, a companion bill by Council Member Van Rees, Bill 2023-1824. Ordinance authorized building material restrictions and requirements for Bill 2023-1823. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, next item is item number 75, Bill 2023-1825 by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending specific plan for properties located at 1201, 1203, 1205, and 1211 8th Avenue South, 809 Edge Hill, Avenue and 1430 Hillside Avenue, approximately 75 feet east of Horton Avenue, zoned SP. Item number 76, the companion bill, BL 2023-1826. Ordinance authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1825. Post ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Um, next item, item number 77, BL 2023-1827 by Council Member Mendez. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from R6, R40, and SP to SP zoning for properties located at 813 Watts Lane, 1201, 1210, 1211, 1216, 1222, and 1230 Watts Terrace and Watts Terrace unnumbered, approximately 1,000 feet east of Charlotte Pike. Companion bill is BL 2023-1828. Ordinance to amend authorized building material restriction requirements for BL 2023-1827. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Next item is on consent is item number 81, BL 2023-1831 by Council Member Hancock. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS 7.5 to SP zoning. Property located at 1017 Pierce Road at the corner of Shannon Avenue and Pierce Road and the companion bill, 1832. Ordinance to authorize building material restriction requirements for BL 2023-1831. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. That's also by Council Member Hancock. Item number 383, BL 2023-1833 by Council Member Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by, char by changing from RS 7.5 to R8A for property on 8 437 Patterson Street, east of Mead Avenue. It's 0.29 acres. Uh, next item, item number 84 by BL 20, uh, by Council Member Taylor, BL 2023-1835. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CN to RM15 NS for property located at 2014 24th Avenue North, southeast of the intersection of Clarksville Pike and 24th Avenue North. Uh, next item on consent, and item number 87, BL 2023-1839 by Council Members Roten, Wells, Stiles, and Benedict. Ordinance codifying a residential landlord's duty to register with the Metropolitan Department of Codes Administration and authorize the Department of Codes administration to process and collect registration fees, impose and collect fines for non-compliance, and establish an administrative process for appeals of any such fines. Next item up <coughs> is item number 89, Bill 2023-1841 by Councilmember O'Connell's Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing Vortex LLC doing business as AJ Capital Partners to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachment in the right-of-way located at 200 Broadway. Item number 90, Bill 2023-1842 by Councilmember O'Connell, Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing Starwood Capital Group Holdings LP to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 710 Demombian Street. Uh, item number 91 by Hurt and O'Connell, BL 2023-1843, ordinance providing the honorary street name designation of Reverend J. H. Johnson Way for a portion of 4th Avenue North. Item number 92, BL 2023-1844 by Councilmember Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon 
excuse me, uh, existing public water mains and accept new public water mains for six properties located on University Avenue. Bill 2023-1845 by Council Members Withers and Pulley. Item number 93, ordinance authorizes Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer main. In addition to sanitary sewer manholes and easement for three properties located at 2130 Hobson Pike, 1273 Maritime, um, I guess that's, um, I don't know, private and maritime uh, or maritime port unnumbered, also known as Hobson Flats. Item number 94, BL 2023-1846 by Council Member Withers and Pulley. It's an ordinance authorizing uh, the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sewer manho mans mains and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 4154 Murfreesboro Pike and Maxwell Road unnumbered. Item number 95, BL 2023-1847, Pulley and Withers. Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water mains and easements for two properties located at 333B Douglas Avenue and 1310B Lishy Avenue, also known as Starlet East Condominiums. Item number 96, BL 2023 1848, O'Connell Withers and Pulley, Ordinance authorizes the Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation of existing public fire hydrant assembly and a new public sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 210 Second Avenue North, also known as Second Avenue Street Street Improvements North Block. Item number 97, BL 2023 1849, by Withers. Pulley and Young, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer force mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for five properties located on East Hill Drive and Twin Hills Drive, also known as Riverview at Cumberland Hills. Uh, item number 98, Bill 2023, 1850, Tombs, Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to accept public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, rehabilitate existing public sanitary sewer manholes for two properties located at 820 and 828 Young's Lane, also known as Cumberland View Villas development. Item number 99, BL 2023-1851 by Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer mains and to accept new public sanitary sewer mains and manholes for property located at 315B Douglas Avenue. Item number 100, BL 2023-1852 by Withers, Pulley and Stiles. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water and sewer sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements, property located at Cambridge Road, unnumbered, also known as Cambridge Farm, Phase 3, Section 3. Item number number 101, Tombs, Withers, and Pulley, BL 2023-1853. Ordinance authorized Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation of a public fire hydrant assembly, probably located at 625 West Trinity Lane. Item number 102, BL 2023-1854 by O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation of public fire hydrant assembly for probably located at 1404 Clifton, uh, Clinton Street, also known as Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery. Item number 103, Welsh, Withers, and Pulley, BL 2023-1855. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly sanitary sewer manholes and easements for seven properties located on Glencliff Road, also known as Noble Place Townhomes. And item number 104, BL 2023 1856, O'Connell Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to construct public sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes and to acquire permanent temporary easements through negotiations and acceptance needed for 15 properties located on Fane Street and J.C. Napier Street. <coughs> um, Looks like we need to pull item number 63. Item number 63 by Council Member Syracuse, Bill 2023-1807. Uh, that bill is going to be pulled. It's item number 63. Mm. Council Member Parker, you recognize me? I apologize. I was in a discussion. Did, did the consent agenda just pass? Okay, I need to pull 65, please. Okay, item number 65. Okay, item number 65, BL 2023-1809 um, has been pulled. Okay. Um, see a hand over on this side. Anything else needs to be pulled off of consent? Councilmember Benedict? I'm sorry, I also was in that conversation. Is item <laughs> 70 on consent? Because I'd like it pulled off, please. Uh, item 70 is not on consent. Thank you. Okay. You all need to quit having conversations when I'm reading these long stories to you. Okay. Anything else? All right. Anything else? Okay. All right. That was a lot. I tried to go slower because there was a lot of stuff floating around at the same time. Okay. I think we've got it all. <clears throat> Lord, reading consent agenda committee reports. I believe they're all in planning and zoning. Councilmember Withers, you recognize. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'll, I'll read these off, and if these are not on consent, I'll just repeat them later. So, okay. um, uh, 1890, 1912, 1813, 1824, 1825, 26, 27, 28, 31, 32, 33, 35. Uh, each of those was on our consent agenda and passed seven in favor, zero against, zero abstention. Okay. Got it. I think that's got them all. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Council Member Withers, if you would, if you'd give me a motion to approve the third reading consent agenda. I would love to move the consent agenda. Got a motion to approve properly seconded. Any discussion on the third reading consent agenda? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the third reading consent agenda say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Okay, so we're going to go back and pick up these bills one at a time. Uh, these are bills that were not on third reading consent. Item number 58, it's on page 18 of my calendar, Bill 2022-1471. Again, it's item number 58. Council members Parker and Welsh are the sponsors. Ordinance to amend section 16.24.030 and 17.04.060 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend the definitions of dwelling unit and family. Council member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to move, do I need to move the bill before I move the amendment? Or you can move the amendment first, that's fine. Okay. Um, well, I will move the amendment that you have in your packet. It is on page 12 of the PDF. All right, so Councilmember Parker is moving amend the amendment to bill 2022-1471 properly seconded. Back to you for further discussion. Thank you, and colleagues, you'll, you'll recognize this bill. We've been discussing this for, I think, seven months or so now. Um, been working really diligently with um, staff and stakeholders to balance the ability of Nashvillians to peacefully enjoy their homes um, while also bolstering the enforcement capabilities of our codes department when there are issues created. Um, and this amendment, um, I think, accomplishes that balance uh, in the best way that's been presented to this body so far. So if you'll recall, we had an amendment applied um, by um, council member from district 25, I believe it is, um, that lowered the number of folks who could live in a home together to four. Um, what we've done, what I heard from colleagues was this one size fits all approach might not be the best thing. So one thing this amendment does is it says that for most of our homes, um, it will be limited to four, the District 25 members amended amount, but for homes that um, have four or more bedrooms, they would allow up to five folks. So those are kind of the, the larger homes in the county uh, would allow up to five folks. And then another thing that we heard from colleagues was on sort of the smaller end, like can you have four people in a studio? Um, we got some good correspondence with codes that says that no, there are, um, it's designated in code that that's not the case. It's designated in a couple of different places. So what we did is if you scroll to the bottom of this amendment in section six, um, it says very clearly that the, the limits that exist in title 16 and in title 17 if they conflict with one another, it is the stricter of the two that applies. Um, so that gives clarification there. Um, and if you'll recall in the enforcement piece, um, as it stands today, um, codes really cannot follow through on enforcement of this um, uh, restriction period. They can send a letter. If folks choose not to comply, then Codes is kind of at a dead end uh, as far as Metro Legal is telling us today. Um, this bill does bolster their ability to enforce genuine overcrowding issues. Um, and so with that, I think we have a good compromise in front of us today with this amendment. I would ask colleagues to support this amendment and then ultimately to support the bill 
um, after we've applied the amendment. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Councilman Parker. We've got a motion to approve the amendment again properly. Second, I've got people in the queue. Uh, Councilman Cash, you're recognized. I, I want to talk about the bill. Oh, okay. About the amendment. All right, Councilman Benedict on the amendment. Okay, recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I, I just, I'm going back to the past seven months and the things that we've heard about this. Um, we started out with seven um, people and that was at the recommendation of, um, or that was kind of standards that we see in other cities similar to Nashville. And um, this is a compromise amendment that was also, um, some parts of it were compromised in the past at five um, persons. So this also is something that one of the largest legislative organizations in the city and in the state and in the country is, is the Realtors Association, and they wrote a letter in support of five, yet this body passed four. So I just think we should be listening to folks who are, you know, I'm in that industry and I work with everyday home buyers and sellers, folks just like you and me, and this is a problem for the, and for the, the entry level homeowners. And this is an opportunity that I'm seeing more and more with people around the age of 30, that they are co-buying homes together and they need something like this. They need it to be five, not four. Um, and so I think it is important that we codify that number um, as, as five. And so I hope that my colleagues will put this amendment on the bill and pass the bill with this amendment on it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I've got people in the queue. Let me check them and then I'm gonna go back. Uh, Councilman Withers on the amendment. Okay, Councilman Withers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I was actually uh, trying to look back to the staff report from when this uh, came to the Planning Commission back in December and wanna always plug for our colleagues to please pay attention to the Planning Commission uh, agendas and staff reports because a lot of the text amendments that may not be in your district per se, but please read that agenda. If there's something you're, that you think you might be interested, please read the staff reports. But we had more detail then, I won't, I won't regale everyone with that now, but this, uh, Council Member Parker has worked even prior to December with Metro Planning staff. Our Metro Planning staff department did a great job of doing research from peer cities, even cities that are smaller than us uh, around the country using uh, best practices research. Some different cities have come up with different conclusions, but many of our peer cities uh, do allow seven. Some of our peer cities have uh, no limit at all on the number of people who can live in a dwelling unit, uh, at least not prescribed by the zoning code. And these are cities that don't necessarily have transit as well. So we're, we're not finding that this, uh, that this is causing the mayhem that I think some people fear, even in cities that don't have transit. Um, and the planning staff recommended and the planning commission recommended approval with a higher number than even this. So this, even this uh, amendment that Councilmember Parker has come up with now is still a compromise. It's still a smaller number than what the planning department and the planning commission recommended. Um, because we know that we do have a housing crisis in our city. We do need to make it more possible for more people to find housing. We do know that um, uh, it's difficult sometimes to get new housing approved um, by the, the commission and by council members. And so if we have an opportunity where there is a building that exists, I think council member uh, Parker's done a great job with this. There's a concern about what if it's a smaller house or whatever, I think council member Parker has done a great job of saying, how can we identify which specific existing buildings might be a better fit for one additional person than others? I think that's great due diligence. And just wanna encourage all of our colleagues to support this uh, today, this amendment, which brings us just a little bit back towards what the planning department and the planning commission recommended approval of. Uh, I think this will uh, create more opportunities opportunities for more of our neighbors to be housed. So thank you. I again reiterate my support for the amendment. All right, thank you, Council Member Withers. Um, Council Member Sledge on the amendment. It's on the amendment. Yeah, I did want to, I did want to rise in support of the amendment as well. Um, I had previously, I think on the original bill, raised concerns that I'm thankful for the sponsor who has addressed in both this amendment and in previous versions. Um, look, we do have a lot of uh, new construction, especially in some of our districts, like the one I represent with HPRs. We've got two units on one lot. Um, I am uh, 
grateful, I will say, to, um, as part of this discussion, I think helped to move along some of the water infrastructure work that I had been previously concerned about for units like this having additional, um, additional inhabitants. Um, so I will say I was comfortable with five overall. I think that was a compromise. I, be I believe that this is a further compromise, and frankly, it's a compromise between the two compromises from what we've got on it right now um, to what we discussed previously. I think this four or five, uh, I think this four or five compromise with making sure that, look, the stricter application applies if there's a conflict, I think we can all get behind that and it will help, I hope, and what Councilmember Parker has put on about codes enforcement, um, it will help in that when we do have an issue, because issues do arise like this where there actually is a strain on our infrastructure and on a particular unit, that codes can really focus on those pieces and not worry so much about, um, and not worry so much about trying to cover a huge swath of complaints that they may or may not be able to enforce. Again, I do support this amendment and would ask colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Pulley, on the Thank amendment, you. on the amendment. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, I appreciate this. First of all, let me say again that uh, Councilmember Parker has been uh, very transparent and authentic about his perspective throughout this and and I very much appreciate that perspective and, uh, and what he's trying to accomplish here. That said, I have a different perspective and uh, I've shared my concerns about this bill in the past uh, and I'm not gonna reiterate every one of those. I do wanna address a couple things that, uh, you know, was mentioned that uh, appropriately so that there are, are cities that are similar to ours who F7 and unlimited, but what wasn't mentioned is that there are also are other cities who are who have a lower amount and who have reduced the amount back to three. We talked about that at uh, the last meeting because of some of the concerns that I have over this. And to speak to the housing issue, also you have to think in terms of yes, this may create more rooms for people, uh, but the other side of that coin is there's evidence to support that it drives the cost of these houses up. So uh, that maybe in some ways inhibit people's ability to actually purchase uh, houses. So uh, my biggest concern is when we go up to these numbers uh, of non-related residents, it puts a strain on our neighborhoods and some of the things that we talked about before uh, that I'm experiencing are, we've already got a lot of cars on the highway and we have five unrelated people. We have five unrelated vehicles unrelated friends, which put vehicles already on an already congested um, uh, neighborhood street. And using this as a traffic calming device is not very compelling to my constituents. That was stated at the last meeting. And I also appreciate another element of Councilmember Parker's involvement here, is he did um, make sure that we addressed codes concerns <clears throat> of enforceability, and those are good good parts about the bill, which are in the bill as it's currently amended. So I appreciate those and I appreciate the extent that he went to for that. But uh, this amendment does raise a number, you know, quite frankly, four is a concern to me because of, uh, because of the things that we're seeing. So uh, unfortunately, I won't be supporting this amendment and I encourage my colleagues to consider the same thing. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay, Councilmember Suara. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to rise in support of the amendment. Uh, I was one of the people that abstained the last time. Uh, housing is an issue, and, and uh, I remember the first time we received the email from the student from Vanderbilt about student trying to find a place to stay. So I, I did support the bill initially, but then when we started having concerns about would you have five people in a studio apartment, that gave me pause. And so I'm so grateful to the sponsor for actually addressing that issue of the number of bedrooms, the number of people in it. We, we have housing crisis. I received another email today from someone else that uh, said, look, this is something that we need to help our people. So this is another tool in the toolbox. And I think in terms of making sure that we avoid overcrowding, I think this amendment does that. I'm also happy that it addressed the code issue. So uh, thank you for putting that in there. I think it makes me a lot more comfortable going back to supporting it. And I think that's that's what we need to do. We need to find solutions and we need to walk through it. And I'm grateful that the sponsor did all of that. And with that, um, folks, you're not gonna find perfect solutions to every issue, uh, but this is one that I think it's a good compromise with what we need to do in terms of providing housing. 
uh, helping people find a place to live, but also making sure that we don't have five people in a studio apartment. So thank you all. All right, thank you. Uh, Catch Marvel O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, also rising in support of the amendment here, uh, I <coughs> want to just share a quick story. I had met with a uh, number of employees at a business in the Gulch recently, and a lot of them were in their 20s and 30s, and I heard a phrase used to describe Nashville that I've not heard previously. Uh, one of the uh, people in the discussion referred to Nashville as a roommate city. Um, and it was a conversation about the challenge of finding affordable housing in the city. Uh, and she was talking about how many of the people that she knows looking to just start their careers here, advance into, uh, you know, working class, middle class scenarios, and even uh, carve out a potential pathway to home ownership in the future are well, almost required to have roommates at this point sometimes in context. And this isn't about you know, creating inexpensive dormitory space for colleges and universities and communities. This is just about the overall status of our housing crisis. And I think uh, Councilmember Parker has been very thorough, has listened to concerns, has looked uh, specifically to find avenues to compromise. And I think we used a very successful approach to bedroom-based uh, regulations in our short-term rental conversations. And I think this amendment has a lot of merit and I intend to support and encourage colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Right. Councilmember Hart. Call the question. Councilmember Hart has called the previous question. Um, we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. Uh, Mr. Clark, I think we need to go on the board on this one. Uh, so what we're voting on is Councilmember Parker's um, motion to amend. Um, again, it was properly seconded. If you're for the amendment, you vote aye. If you're against, you vote no. Okay, so we're voting on a motion to adopt the amendment. Mr. Clerk, you ready? All right, uh, Mr. Clerk, open up the machine. Everybody in? Okay, everybody in? Mr. Clark? Close machines, take the vote. Eyes 22, no's 8, uh, one abstention. Uh, the amendment passes. Um, so, uh, Councilmember Parker, you're on your bill as amended. There you come. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move the bill for approval. All right. So um, we're voting on. Um, so uh, Councilmember Parker has moved BL 2022-1471 as amended for passes on second on third reading. Excuse me. Uh, properly seconded. Now we're on discussion on the bill as amended. Um, so we have still got people in the queue, but I'm going to start with Councilmember Cash because uh, you want to be recognized on the bill. Councilmember Cash, right? Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, when we started off with this bill, at when it was at seven unrelated individuals, I was nervous. I had a lot of constituents who were uh, either nervous or ab adamantly against. I think Councilmember Parker should be commended on all the good work that he's done on this. Um, not not only do, I mean the. First thing that is just blatantly obvious that needs to be changed is that uh, is the stuff about redefining family, the notion that a married couple can't have a roommate or a nanny, a live-in nanny that isn't related to them. It's just ridiculous, and that's changing, which I think is good. And then it, it utilizes that we have a, a you know affordable and and only affordable but but housing options problem in the city, and this uh, definitely helps with that. Um, uh, I think the the. The compromise numbers 
uh, make it better. I think the what uh, Councilmember Parker did and the amendment that we just passed that that my, one of the issues was we were hearing from codes and we were kind of hearing that they used Title 16 for this and kind of that they used Title 16 for for building codes and not occupancy later after the UNO has been permitted been given. Um, but this explicit this amendment explicitly ties. Uh, Title 16 and the number of bedrooms to the legislation, which I think is a definite improvement. Um, we've also passed two other things, or I think if 1839 was on uh, consent, we've either passed or we're about to pass a second one. Two things that improve this um, occupancy stuff in that it, with, we passed a resolution that um, the, when a landlord registers, the occupancy rules are referred to and, and they have to sign, so they should be aware of the occupancy rules. Also, we passed an ordinance that codifies um, landlord registration, so more landlords are registering. Not only does that allow uh, for fines if they uh, don't register, but also they um, we have a contact, so we can we have a way, a better way to reach landlords if there are any kind, you know, other kinds of codes problems with um, their tenants or with their landlording. Um, you know, uh, so I think it's I think it's a lot better bill, uh, and I'm proud to support it. Uh, is it going to mean that there are never any problems that come out of it? No, um, but I think we kind of need to keep working on some of these things. And it's not about the number of people in the home. It's about, um, you know, stuff like cars. Uh, we need to work better at not only giving people an option of residential permit parking, but helping creating infrastructure, which might just be paint that shows how to park on the street. And so that, you know, blocking driveways is less frequent. Um, it's, it, you know, it's not just about somebody wanting their own the front of their own home to park in front of, but there are sometimes there are issues with how many or how they are parked on the street. And we need to work on that with NDOT. There are noise issues, there are all kinds of noise issues in the city that we need to work with departments on. This bill, whether this bill passes, as I hope it does, or it doesn't pass, there's still noise issues that we need to help our citizens with. Um, in my district, a lot of people are concerned about universities and students. That's kind of the big thing that comes up and the expectation of where an issue might be. I know both of the universities in my district, and I know there are others outside of my district that, um, that are ready to help with their students and they want their students to become better neighbors. I think this is an, uh, a great bill and I encourage support. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Cash. Uh, Councilmember Hart. Count a question. <laughs> Councilman Hurd has called the previous question. Okay, we'll try it by voice vote on the previous question, not voting on the bill. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are voting on BL 2022-1471 as amended for passage on third reading. Um, Mr. Clark, uh, we're gonna need to do it by uh, machine. Okay, so if you're in favor of the bill, you vote aye. If you're opposed, you vote no. You ready? Yep. <coughs> okay. All right, we're ready. Um, we're voting on BL 2022-1471 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Mr. Clark, open up the machines. O'Connell, Councilmember O'Connell. Mm, you, okay, you're in. All right, Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Okay. 
ayes 22, noes 9. Uh, one abstention bill passes on third and final reading. Okay. All right, we are now ready for item number 59, Bill 2023-1688 by Councilmember Radford and Stiles. It's an ordinance to amend chapters 8.04 and 8.08 relative to the regulation of animals. Uh, Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I do have a uh, housekeeping amendment. I need to suspend the rules to get that passed. All right, uh, Councilmember Murphy, did this come to you all? It did not come before the rules committee. Okay, so Councilmember Bradford, uh, you're gonna have to move to suspend the rules because you didn't go that way and you're trying to get something on here late. So you'll need to move to suspend the rules. Move to suspend the rules. Okay. All right, so um, it's a motion to uh, suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, uh, you're on your amendment. Uh, go proceed ahead. Thank you. Um, I'll try my best to explain, but I may, may have to kick it over to Ms. Darby to explain it better. But basically, when we added some of the amendments last time, it caused uh, an, error, an issue with the numbering. And so this is just cleaning up the numbering and making sure everything flows correctly. But did, did I kind of explain that? There you go. All right, so um, you're moving the amendment yes. uh, for, uh, for passage properly seconded. You've explained the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. You're on your bill now as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the bill. All right. So Council Member Bradford has moved uh, passage on for third and final reading on bill 2023-1688 as amended. Properly second to discussion on the bill. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of passage of bill 2023-1688 as amended for passage on third and final reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third and final reading. All right. Uh, we are now on item number 61, bill 2023-1793. Council members Benedict, Roden, Suara, and Weathers. An ordinance approving a lease agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government of National Destiny County acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Education and East End Prep. Council member Benedict, you're recognized on the bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with some uh, with some comments, please. All right, so I've got a, a motion to approve on third reading, Bill 2023-1793, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you. So, um, oh, sorry, I thought I heard a voice somewhere. Okay, so this is, I, I referenced this earlier tonight when we were talking about these charter school leases. This is one, if you, in the analysis, it shows that the term of this lease begins July 1st of 2022. So not quite a year ago, and it was about a year ago right now that we were able to, that I was able to get this bill deferred with this body, um, on this body, and, um, and through that, we negotiated a better lease. We negotiated better terms, we negotiated a better price, um, and this school does take up the entire building. Um, and, and in this particular case, I think that what we've got at this point is a, a, a good agreement for us moving forward few things that it does that I think are important is in the past it showed, um, we had a market analysis that showed that it was $5 per square foot, which is a market price, and yet the lease showed that it was $4 per square foot. I'm not sure why we did that, but that's something that is improved in this where we're $5.20 per square foot. <laughs> Excuse me, and that will be increased by 4% each year. So, and it's also spelled out in the contract. It's a much tighter contract than what it was before. And I appreciate the administration's work on this, the school board's work on this, and schools work on this. Um, I think this is exactly what my constituents have brought us here to do. Again, things come before us and we get the, ch the opportunity to make them better. And this is an example that where we did that. Unfortunately, we don't get to do that all the time. We don't get the opportunity to do that all the time, but in this particular case, we did and successfully did it. So with that, renew my uh, motion for approval and ask the body support. All right, so Councilmember Benedict has uh, moved approval uh, for on third passage, on third reading on bill 2023-1793. Again, seconded discussion on the bill. Councilman Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd just like to, you know, separate from concerns about the structure of some of these leases, I think it's important to, I would just like to say the reason why I have such an issue with these and why being pro-charter and being pro-voucher are exactly the same thing. Charter schools are taxpayer-funded 
public schools, but they're actually private schools because they get to decide what kids go there. They get to choose their student body just like private schools do. <coughs> they are not accountable to the Metro School Board or Metro taxpayers for anything they do. They have the opportunity to throw kids out of school that aren't gonna test well and put them into other schools to make those schools look like their test scores are down and improve their own test scores. Just they are also taking money out of public schools and, give, and going into these private schools. It's the exact same thing. When you have 10 kids that are pulled from a public school to a charter school and that money goes, the fixed costs in that public school don't change. The number of teachers you need in that school don't change, but now you just lost a bunch of money and that's how we lose things like the arts in our school. So I support the arts in our school. I support funding for our public schools and I just, I appreciate the work Council Member Benedict has done on this. I just, I. I just can't be complicit in it. Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm, I too am rising in opposition to this. And, um, our, my colleague has made some great points. One point I would like to add to that is when the federal government was handing out PPP loans, it was stated that these are just for businesses. Well, these charter schools were able to get these PPP loans. Our public schools were not. So in my opinion, that makes these businesses and not schools. And we, we need to stop diverting taxpayer dollars to fund these private enterprises that are, that their whole intent is to shut down and defund our public education system. So I urge my colleagues to vote no. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just wanna rise in support of this school because I know that they choose their students from the largest public housing project in Nashville and that those are not necessarily the students that I would go after if I were trying to make money on a school. They do that because they love this community and they're doing their best to provide them with a great educational option. So I, I'm frustrated that what should be just a business transaction is turning into um, a discussion of charter schools every time we bring this up. But I would, I would just invite anyone in this room to go visit this particular school to volunteer for the Martha O'Brien Center like I do and to see how they are changing the lives of these children. And I hope that we will support this so that again, we can take away another item of uncertainty um, and allow Metro to make use of, of buildings to educate our children in our public schools. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember mm -hmm. Allen. Councilmember Cash. Thanks, I, I don't know if I uh, am gonna vote for this or not. Uh, my concern is, is less about each of these um, charter leases that we've, I don't know, there have been like six or seven at least over the last year. My concern is, is that we're collecting a lease and I think the lease is fine in terms of the amount that we're collecting and I believe that it's a, you know, market rate. But what we're, what we're, what's not part of this plan is that on the cap the school's capital budget, capital, like seven year capital plan is there are tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, renovation needs that these buildings are gonna have. And the least money that we're collecting for rent is not gonna pay for that. So we need a, I don't know about this one bill, each one at a time, but we need a plan or we need to make sure that the school board comes with, up with a plan because they're in the rental business and we need to make sure that we're not gonna end up paying for hundred million dollars in renovations of these buildings without a public discussion, a public dialogue about uh, if we want to su subsidize these, these rental agreements. Uh, and it, it won't, you know, anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Van Rees. Previous question. Council Member Van Rees has called the previous question. We'll try it by voice vote. We're voting on the previous question, not on the bill. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are voting on BL 2023-1793 by Council Member Benedict. It was properly seconded. We're on the board. Mr. Clark. Um, again, it's a motion to pass on third reading. If you're for the, the bill, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open up the machines.
Councilmember O'Connell, Councilmember Taylor. And Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Eyes 24, no seven, one abstention. Uh, the bill passes on third reading. All right. Um, we are now on uh, item number 63 uh, by Council Member Syracuse. It's Bill 2023-1807. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS-10, RS-15 to SP zoning on properties located at 4340 Longfellow Drive and 2646 Lock 2 Road at the current terminus of Longfellow Drive, partially located within a plan unit development overlay district. It's 135.06 acres. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, all committee reports in, move approval. Uh, you've got a, uh, I think you've got a planning. planning. Yeah, planning. Councilmember Withers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is one of those that I had thought was on consent. And That's okay. Wasn't paying appropriate attention when you were reading. The this consent. one got pulled but, late, so you're um, okay. But yes, this one, and I, there's an associated one. I can't, I don't know if we're taking them together, but um, for both uh, items related to this, planning and zoning recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, thank you. Back to you, Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, move approval. I got a, a motion to approve, properly seconded. Discussion on the bill. Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Vice, Thank you, Vice Mayor, the, my button was not working. Um, are we taking these together or are we taking them separately? Uh, the uh, second one has already passed, I think. Uh, oh, bill 2023-1808 uh, okay. has already passed on consent. I appreciate the work that's been done on this, but I, I feel very uncomfortable building something, an assisted living facility with an idea that this could be very unsafe. And I, I've seen situations where it has not worked out. So I am a no, and I hope people will take that into consideration, that you may not have someone in your family that is disabled. It is concerning when something goes awry and people can't get to them. Thank you. All right, Councilmember Syracuse. Move approval. Okay. Councilmember Syracuse again has moved approval, again properly seconded. Uh, Councilmember Withers, I'm going to be recognized. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I think we have to go on the board on this. Uh, Mr. Clark? We'll be voting on BL 2023-1807 by Councilmember Syracuse. Uh, again, properly seconded. Okay, ready to vote. Uh, so uh, it's a motion to pass on third and final reading. We're voting on BL 2023-1807. Uh, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, problem? It, I just letting you know, it seems like I'm watching other machines light up before mine. That's why I'm coming in late every time. I don't know what is going on, but my tablet seems to be delayed. So mine just came on right now. I'm just yeah, we're, you know. we're doing that on purpose. Because Great. I, I love that. <laughs> That's done through mind control. Okay. Everybody's in. Mr. Clark, close machines. Take the vote. Eyes 28, no three, one abstention. Uh, bill passes on third and final reading. Okay. All right, we're on um, uh, item number 65, Bill 2023-1809 by Council Members Parker, Benedict, and Weathers. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by canceling a portion of the institutional overlay for various properties on both sides of Calton Avenue, north of Douglas Avenue, located within the Nashville Auto Diesel College Institutional Overlay District. Uh, Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. At the request of two parties involved in a relevant real estate transaction, I would like to defer this to uh, the first meeting in July. Okay. This one's going to be deferred to the first meeting in July. Um, that's the motion, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the motion to defer? Seeing none, we're voting on a motion to defer to the first meeting in July, BL 2023-1809. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Nope. 
Uh, this one is deferred to the first meeting in July. All right. Uh, item number 66 by Council Member Toombs, BL 2023-1810. Uh, ordinance amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan for property ticket at 2143, 2145, and 2145 B Goodrich Avenue, 2125 Buena Vista Pike, and various properties located between Alpine Avenue and Goodrich Avenue, approximately 290 feet northwest of Buena Vista Pike, zoned SP and RA 2.85 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered BL 2023-1810. There is an amendment. We recommended approval of the amendment uh, as well as the bill as amended, eight in favor, zero against zero, uh, not voting. All right, thank you, Councilmember Withers. So back to you, Councilmember Toombs. Yes, I'd like to move the amendment. Uh, Councilmember Toombs is moving an amendment to BL 2023-1810, properly seconded discussion of the amendment. Uh, the amendment prohibits non-owner occupied short-term rentals in phase three and four of the project and also directs the developer to work with NDOT to identify and install any traffic calming measures. All right, you've heard an explanation of the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's on. You're on your bill as amended. Move for approval as amended. All right. So Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval on third reading of Bill 2023-1810 as amended. Properly seconded. Discussion on the bill as amended. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Bill 2023-1810 as amended uh, for passage on third reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on third reading. Okay. Uh, we are now on... Um, Item number 70, Bill 2023-1818 by Council Member Syracuse. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from AR2A, CS, and R15 to SP zoning on properties located at 2400 Pennington Bend Road, unnumbered at McAvick Pike, unnumbered approximately 61 feet north of Opry Mills Drive, 214.37 uh, acres to permit a mixed-use development. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Withers. <laughs> Trying to refresh my memory on this one. So we looked at an amendment, um, planning and zoning looked at an amendment and we approved the amendment eight in favor, zero against zero abstention. When it came to the bill as amended, I have nine in favor, zero against zero abstention. So we may have had another member join us. All right, thank you, Councilmember Withers. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move my amendment. All right, so Councilmember Syracuse has moved an amendment to Bill 2023-1818, properly seconded. Uh, back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. As promised, uh, this better articulates the process by which we utilize our uh, archaeology uh, resources here in, in Metro. We just recently hired a archaeologist and uh, so there's certain processes even by state law that you have to take uh, within archaeology so this just better articulates what that process already is so that there's greater clarity and transparency that there will be a robust archaeological study of, of the site all right you've heard an explanation of the amendment is there discussion on the amendment uh councilmember benedict uh, yeah. on the bill yep. okay uh council member withers okay anybody on the amendment Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's on. Councilmember Syracuse, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval as amended. All right. So Councilmember Syracuse has moved approval, uh, moved for passage on uh, BL 2023-1818 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Properly seconded. Uh, people in the queue, Councilmember Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so this property is within 1,000 feet of District 7 across the Cumberland River, and my constituents there have had concerns about it from the start. Many changes have been made. Um, however, we're still looking for more important protections for Pennington Bend. There are concerns about building in the floodplain, and this development still has 155 RV sites in the floodplain. And as we know, our bends are special places in the city, and they ought to be protected from overdevelopment. So when will we decide that our unique natural resources in our limited areas of the city are more important than new development? This is yet another example of resources being used not for local residents, but for tourists. At what point are we gonna put Nashvilleians first? How much more development deep in our neighborhoods, on our bends, until we've had enough? I'd like to see all driveways, RV campsites, and resort accessory buildings be removed from the floodplain. The only development that should be permitted within the floodplain would be the recreation areas 
that were shown in the preliminary SP plan that was approved by the Planning Commission. Um, also, a greenway, a working farm, and potential improvements or enhancements to the environmental and natural resources that are already present. As it is, I cannot support this tonight. I would like to defer the bills for the 155 RV campsites will be removed from the floodplain and be relocated to portions of the site that are not within the conservation overlay policy. And so with that, I'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. All right, so uh, Councilmember Benedict has moved for a one meeting deferral, properly seconded. So we're on a motion to defer. Um, I've got um, people in the queue, but uh, we're on the motion to defer. If you want to be recognized on the motion to defer, raise your hand. Uh, Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, I'm really touched that the people that live way high up on the bluff, about seven or eight of them, are so concerned about my neighbors who completely support this development. Uh, removing 155 of the uh, RV parks that are completely uh, pervious, uh, there's no concrete there, uh, will kill the whole deal. And that's what the intent is of the sponsor of, of the, of the uh, um, a council member from District 7, representing about seven or eight people that we had a meeting with, listened to their con total concerns. Uh, their, their legit concern was the open um, uh, auditorium, if you will, the, the, the music venue. That was totally a le legit concern. Uh, it was changed, it was made much smaller, it was made indoors. And so, out, and then outside of that, after listening to a lot of neighbor in, input, the developer did go back to the planning commission and say, look, we've, we've made all these changes. Um, we heard a robust discussion yesterday in the planning committee uh, from uh, Ms. Milligan about the definition of conservation policy and floodplain. Uh, this is a really good use of this land. And um, in case the council member from District 7 didn't realize, this is the Opryland area. This is a tourist area. Um, I have talked uh, ad nauseum about the, uh, the, the, what I have done over the past eight years in regards to recognizing the difference between rural character, suburban character, and regional tourist destination. Um, I, I've, I've done a lot of work on this to make it work for, for this development. Uh, on, the, on this parcel, everybody who lives around it or has a business around it supports it. It's very odd that the people who live way up behind the buff, bluff, who right now have a beautiful view, are f finding any way they can to kill this. So please vote against this deferral and support my district. Thank you. All right, uh, Councilor Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, so once again, I'm gonna speak very strongly against a deferral on this. Uh, this is one of those, if you wanna vote no, please vote no. Uh, Council Member Syracuse has um, worked very diligently, including with folks in District 7. Um, this was brought to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission considered it the first time. There were things we liked about it, things we were concerned about. And we requested that they come back. We placed a lot of conditions on it if they were to come back, and they met those conditions. Um, for the conservation policy, we all agree that um, Protecting natural resources is important. Uh, during our deliberations, I actually read from the conservation policy uh, and asked staff to help us to describe how they would interpret that and how this plan would apply to it. What Ms. Milligan at that time emphasized was that having a permanent structure in a floodplain might be one thing, but these are movable structures, that there would be conditions in place that would provide for absorption. Um, there was discussion about evacuation plans, which seems to be coming up lately. All of these things were discussed at the Planning Commission before this was moved with approval, with conditions, and disapproval without all conditions. Lots of diligence has been done. We've heard additional things about archaeology. Councilmember Syracuse has worked diligently with our Metro Historical Commission staff to add what is actually redundant, but gone ahead and put it into the bill to discuss the archaeological aspect because we know that that's important. We all agree on that. So there is uh, not anything constructive that is going to happen uh, through a deferral of this bill. If folks want to revise Nashville next, great. If you want to put an ordinance that says something else about developing in floodplains or natural areas, great. Bring that ordinance to the Planning Commission and we can all talk about it. But nothing constructive is going to happen with the deferral of this bill. If you want to vote against it, vote against it. 
but it's just time to move on. Councilmember Syracuse has been very diligent, has gone out of his way to meet with the residents of District 7 and the District 7 council member. We've heard from this multiple times now. I do think that council member Benedict is right to represent the voice of her constituents, but these are folks who live way up on the bluff overlooking all this. The folks living in the, in the floodplain area in Pennington Bend were definitely in support of this, took the time out to come to the Planning Commission uh, to speak in favor of this plan, as well as at the Planning, uh, as well at the Metro Council. We need to list, if we're concerned about flooding, we need to listen to the people who are most affected by flooding. Those folks have spoke in favor of this plan. We need to uh, vote for it today, up or down, but I'm firmly against a deferral. Okay, we're um, again on a motion to defer. Council Member Hancock, you're recognized. Um, I'd like to speak in opposition to a deferral. It, the reason for the deferral is to remove the um, RV spots. The RVs are, you know, registered vehicles, but they're they're campers, right? So recreational vehicles. Sorry, they're campers. I, I have a res registered vehicle. My my parents live in one, you know, four months out of the year. But when they're in an area that's going to get a lot of rain, then they they move it to a different location and vacation somewhere else. And I think that's the beauty of this is it allows the property owner to get the best value out of this area. It allows people to come and visit, but then they can leave if it's going to rain, if we're gonna have flooding. And um, I, I'm in support of this and opposed to a deferral. All right, thank you. Uh, on the motion to defer, Councilmember Bradford. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm standing in opposition of this deferral, you know, in the four years I've been on this council and serving alongside council member Syracuse from the 15th district, I've seen that he's been very deliberate when he has these conversations, when he has these proposals, he doesn't leave any stone unturned. And at the end of the day, this is his district and we need to trust his judgment on this and the judgment of his constituents on this rezoning that impacts their community and nobody else's. So I'm asking my colleagues to vote against this deferral and then eventually vote in favor of the bill. Right, uh, we're still on a motion to defer. Anybody else want to talk about the motion to defer? All right, we are, Councilmember Swar. Don't know if it's appropriate or not, I have a question. It's on a, it's a deferral motion. I know. <laughs> 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 it was going to help me decide that if that helps. Um, uh, well, go ahead and then I'll, I'll see. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I guess the question that I have is this. For people that did not attend the planning meeting and did not listen to the answers about the floor plan being addressed, I think it would be good if someone will answer whether the uh, answers or what were the solutions to the land being a floor plain. I, I guess that's that's what I'm not hearing. And I think there's reference to meeting being had there. There's reference to Ms. Mulligan, but I think it would be good if someone would just tell us exactly what those resolutions were. That, that's, that's- um, On the bill. I'm, I'm, that's too, that's that's too far. That's a question. Okay. Yeah, but it was a good try, okay. Hey. We're on the motion to defer. You gave me my motion answer. to defer. Anybody else on the motion to defer? All right, so where we are is Councilmember Benedict has moved to defer this bill one meeting. It was properly seconded. So if you're for the motion to defer, you'd vote aye. If you're against it, you'd vote no. We'll try by voice vote. All those in favor of the motion to defer say aye. Uh, opposed say no. Uh, the motion to defer fails. So we are back on uh, Councilmember we are back on Council Member Syracuse's bill, bill 2023-1818. Council Member Syracuse, um, I think we've still got people in the queue, so let me run through that if that's okay. Um, I've got Council Member Withers in the queue on this bill. Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I know Ms. Milligan is not present, but I'm wondering if we could call upon the planning department uh, staff to address Councilmember Suarez's very uh, appropriate question about uh, floodplain and to what extent this um, proposal as amended, which is before us today, um, is affected by floodplain concerns. Who's gonna handle that? Okay, Logan. Okay, you're yes. on. Uh, planning staff found the proposed plan to limit the 
um, campsites to be in the floodplain area, which have a less intense disturbance of the of the land with impervious surface. So the more intense and impervious surface areas are located outside the floodplain with only the campsites being provided in the conservation policy areas. Councilman Withers. Um, so let me try to read from the minutes. Um, let's see, so, um, Councilmember Withers stated that we have conservation policy and uh, that does not necessarily stop all development from happening in any of these areas, but it needs to be done sensitively. I read a chapter uh, from the community character manual on the conservation policy um, for conservation. I asked if this would be considered more of a greenfield development site um, and if so, how that would apply to this land. So there's greenfield means that you're, you're putting a new structure or something in an area that had not previously necessarily been developed. Um, Ms. Milligan answered that this would be considered a greenfield development site where they would want to focus the majority of the development on a nud on non floodplain sites and low impact development of the areas of the floodplain that are proposed to be disturbed. So, so that what that means is that this proposal moved the, the oh, there were there were previously items such as a restaurant and some other previous services that were in the floodplain all of those were relocated out of the site and what was left in was only the um, the previous um, campsites only at a very small percentage I think it reduced it down to maybe 20 percent of the of the conservation or floodplain area up at, up at the top of the hill. Uh, there are other factors as well as the um, proposal um, removes the channelization of some of the streams that have, that, that was already there and it improved the pervious nature of the site. Uh, also added more uh, tree uh, canopy to the site to help with uh, flood mitigation concerns. So this uh, has the, uh, the very minimal amount of, uh, of any kind of disturbance of the site, but whatever is in the floodplain is is all pervious surface. And as well, another concern was that the um, the sewage disposal portions of it are also uh, built in a manner that does not allow uh, spillage. All right, thank you, Councilmember Withers. Uh, Councilmember Parker, you recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll be brief here. I, uh, I, I've heard from, um, some of my East Nashville neighbors about this about this proposal, concerns about specifically the archaeological thing, and then the RVs in the floodplain. And I, I just I want to say, as I understand it, you know the the floodplain they're not really adding impervious surface area. It's going to be it's going to be gravel. Um, these are um, basically motor vehicles that can be moved to higher ground or safer location um, if flooding does start occurring. Um, and you know for those reasons, I think that this is probably a good use of that particular site. You can't do much else there because it is a floodplain, but having temporary um, RVs that can kind of boot scoot boogie their way out of the area if, um, for those of you who don't know the area, that's um, a popular song in the, uh, in the area. Um, so, okay, look, I also just want to say, Nashville's become a very expensive place to visit. And when we talk about Boot Scoop Boogie, like, it, this is a way that, like, more working class families can come spend a week in Nashville who could never dream of affording a downtown hotel. Um, so I think that having the RV parks up there is fun, and there's some fun establishments up that way if you ever want to do something touristy. All right, thank you, Councilman Parker. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Did you say pass? Uh, Councilmember Swara. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you, Councilmember Withers. What I was trying to get to uh, is us to use layman terms that people listening can understand. And the way the impervious and all of that, people still don't get it. And so, what I understand from the way it was explained to me, and what it, uh, uh, because my concern was the floodplain. My understanding is that one, like everybody said, these are RVs that are movable. And then number two, the lands is not something that will be concrete or cement where the water, if it rains, will not be able to absorb. So what's gonna be there is something that can absorb the rain and make sure that even if there's a rain happening, it goes into the soil. So I wanted to 
only to use the layman terms. Uh, uh, that's what I was looking for so that everybody understand that uh, the, the, the planning department is okay with this because of those changes that move most of the building off and only leave temporary RVs that can be moved and also making sure that the soil is not where when the water comes it cannot get in the soil. So that's what I was looking for and so thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Councilman Van Rees. Previous question. Councilman Van Rees has called the previous question. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. Uh, it looks like we're going to be on the board on this one. Bill 2023-1818, Mr. Clerk. It's a motion to pass on third reading as the bill is amended. We're on Bill 2023-1818. Mr. Clerk, you ready? Okay. Open up the machines. If you're for the bill, uh, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. We're on BL 2023-1818 as amended for passage on third reading. Everybody in? All right, Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Eyes 27, noes 2, uh, zero abstentions. Uh, bill passes on third reading. All right. Um, we now are on... Uh, we're now on BL 2023-1829 by Council Member Murphy. There is a bill that goes with it, a companion bill, which is uh, item number 80, BL 2023-1830. Uh, we'll take them separately. Um, first bill up is BL 2023-1829. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from MUL to SP zoning for property located at 4500 Harding Pike, southwest of the corner of Whitebridge Pike and Harding Pike. It's 10.57 acres to permit a mixed-use development. Council Member Murphy, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to move so this gets in front of us, and I'd like to move Amendment 1. Uh, let's get a committee report in first. Council Member mm -hmm. Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Would you like me to read the committee reports on the, all of the amendments or just this one at this time? Uh, you can uh, do them all. Do them all at one time. All right. <clears throat> so, for Amendment 1, Planning and Zoning recommended nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting, and that's Council Member Murphy's Amendment number 1. Amendment number two was by Council Member Druffel. Uh, that one we recommended disapproval, so we had zero in favor, eight against, one not voting. Amendment number three, by, which was by Council Member Druffel, we did have a positive recommendation. That was uh, four in favor, two against, three not voting. For amendment number four by Council Member Druffel, uh, we had zero in favor, nine against, and zero not voting. And then for the bill as amended, and our version of amended included amendments number one and number three, we recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's an amendment number five. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, so amendment number five, zero in favor, nine against, zero not voting. And then the bill as a whole, <laughs> Amendment one by Councilmember Murphy and amendment number three by Councilmember Druffel, nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Okay. All right, thank you, Councilmember Withers. Back to you, Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to move amendment one for approval. And I would also like to, if I can, just run down um, the changes and things that are in amendment one. Okay, so Councilmember Murphy has moved amendment number one to BL 2023-1829 properly seconded back to you for an explanation of what's in the amendment. So first, let me go ahead and, and thank several of my colleagues who have attended meetings, who have given feedback, and have helped shape a lot of these amendments and the changes that have been made since planning. So in Amendment 1, um, we are changing a bit of the amendment that we put on last meeting. Uh, so. Last meeting, we put on a, uh, an amendment that included information about free parking and free parking for, for about an, uh, an hour that would start and always be there for 10 years after completion of this building. Um, 
but I was a little worried about a little gray area with that. And so, and it was another council member at large who, who brought up that an hour is kind of a fast paced dinner, right? So this is moving it up from an hour to an hour and a half free parking. And it will be uh, for 10 years after the completion of 75% of the building. So because we had some discussion in planning yesterday, it gets a little tricky the way this is worded and probably could have been done better. Um, and, and I'll take the hit on that one. But so what it means is once parking has been started to be built and created until they hit 75% of the buildings um, open, that's when the clock starts counting for that 10 years. So we know that it will take several years for all of these things to get to the point of 75%. So while it is 10 years past that, that 75% occupancy is when the 10 years start clicking. So that means that parking before and then for 10 years after that 75%. So it's really more than 10 years. Um, so that's the change to what we had previously put on. And, and I'd like to thank um, my fellow council members for helping me work through that one. <coughs> so what this also does is um, I said at the last meeting that I was negotiating about six figures for sidewalk improvements. Um, through looking back through feedback from the community meetings and the emails that I received and comments heard at public hearing, there's a lot of concerns about, um, well, we all know that there are general concerns about when money goes into the sidewalk fund, where does it go, where are those sidewalks and things like that, right? Um, there were a lot of concerns to make sure that this new greenway really fully connects to the current Richland Creek Greenway, which I. I know it will, I believe it will, but in case there are any gaps or issues with that, this the 250,000 um, will be going to Greenways to help with that. But we didn't wanna, I didn't wanna specify what it would be. So it could be safety improvements. It could be a variety of things. It could be a, a gap in the sidewalk or things like that, but going to the Greenway, um, the Richland Creek Greenway area. Also, and I know my time's running out, so I'll speed up. If you look in the amendment, it takes that, that contribution that they are doing for uh, the mobility study that was identified, all of those different items, it breaks it down into buckets so we know what that $1 million is going. And if you'll indulge me for just a second more, it does include, this also attaches uh, an Exhibit A, a letter from um, the NDOT director because some of the, the conditions got a little confusing because there are conditions from the overall mobility plan. Obviously those are divvied out amongst current and future projects. And so that letter is just simply clarifying um, a little bit of who's responsible for what immediately. So happy to answer any questions on that. And with that, I move approval and ask for support on amendment one. Okay, so there's a motion to approve amendment number one on BL 2023-1829. It was properly seconded discussion. Uh, Council member Druffel, you're recognized. Yeah, thanks Chair. Uh, I just had a question for NDOT to with, with the letter from uh, Director Alcorn, could you sort of help us? I, I think I understand what it says, but you, could you just, in your own words, differentiate what we're hearing in this letter, how it differentiates this project from the others, and what what uh, what amounts are different? And don't you recognize? Yes, sir, uh, Councilmember Druffel. So what it does is it makes it clear that the conditions for Bill May Plaza will be are, are separate not they're not they're not going to actually have to contribute to the entire of the regional study they have a portion of it but they're not it's not it really makes the distinction between the regional study and this particular uh, conditions for the building plaza itself so that was one thing it did in addition it also clarified that there will be further you know further requirements further further uh, conditions added later on as far as different traffic effect study requirements that come out in the future. Thank, thanks very much. I think the one of the uh, good things that Council Lady Murphy did is try to bring a regional component together, uh, which is great and from a mobility stance, but at the same time, it created a little confusion as to what was for what, and this hopefully will do that. But also when you look at some of the solutions, for example, the 375,000 for the uh, light synchronization by standalone does not actually solve any of the problems. It, we actually, uh, Director Alcorn has agreed to supplement that to create a four light solution. But 
recognize that when we do this, we won't have all the solutions till all the projects are completed. And that's a lot of what our, our, I think our concerns are in, in the, our district, at least. Uh, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Councilmember Druffel. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would, I would just, again, I'm gonna go back to NDOT if I can to clarify. On the regional mobility study on page 72 and 73, there are recommendations that say specifically for Bellmead Plaza, do these things so the traffic won't be made worse by what you're doing. My understanding is that those things that are specifically spelled out for Bellmead Plaza are officially part of the conditions that the planning department said had to be done as part of this. Can you, can yes, you clarify that? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Awesome, thank you very much. And if Council Member Murphy needs more time, I would yield the rest of my time to her. Councilmember Murphy. Actually, thank you, um, Council Lady Allen. I will take that. So yesterday it was clarified in um, planning, this has been in the mobility um, meetings and things uh, specified in NDOT. You can you can clarify what, what I probably uh, get a little muddy here. But so while these the, the buckets are broken down here per project or what they're being contributed to, um, the other pieces are coming from projects that are already in the pipeline, that already have improvements. Quite frankly, had the existing entitlements in the area been built when they were first issued, we probably wouldn't have these. But it's my understanding that NDOT will be moving forward with things like the six traffic lights syncing up and moving forward. And, and then when those other projects come online, it's kind of like a, a, a reimbursement of NDOT. Those are, I'm sure, not the the official terms y'all would like to use, but those are the, the terms that make sense to me if y'all, if you wanna clean that up any. Yeah, Count, yes, Councilmember Murphy. So she is correct. So they, the parts that you see in this amendment, they're part of a larger piece that, that actually is gonna be conditioned apart for the other uh, deployments as part of this regional study, other developments. So you see, for example, the 365,000 that, that uh, Council Member Duffel referenced, uh, that's a portion of the total. Uh, there's actually a total gonna be uh, 750,000 uh, for signal enhancements. Uh, this actually funds more than half of that uh, requirement for that signals, but we are actually going to move forward. We're not going to wait, you know, for the the entirety of that to come in before we make the make the changes and make improvements. And so, when those lights are updated in the fiber optic ways and things like that, those lights we will see improvements when lights are upgraded. You will see immediate benefits to to as far as synchronization and then supporting through movement in there. We uh, actually also provisioned as part of this condition the, the development of uh, the use of adaptive signal control technology, which is uh, use of artificial intelligence, which actually helps uh, be more proactive in certain times of non-reoccurring conditions, uh, traffic incidents, for example, or if you have something on the freeway or you have diversions or closures, uh, the, that technology allows that to be more proactive. In addition, paired with that, we, are, we already have in, in the deployment stages our traffic management center. So these are all gonna be integrated into our traffic management center as we'll have actually butts in the seats who will be monitoring the system. So we will see that we don't have to wait for everything to be completed throughout. That is going to happen from the jump. That okay. is correct. Thank you. Uh, I renew my motion. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendez. Of course. Council Member Mendez has uh, called the previous question. Um, so we're not voting on the amendment, we're just voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are voting on amendment number one. We'll try by voice vote. All those in favor of amendment number one uh, to BL 2023-1829. All those in favor of, of amendment number one say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment number one passes. All right, so uh, Councilmember Murphy, uh, we have an amendment number two. Um, I also, I'm sorry, let me, I don't wanna get out of order too much, but there is a letter that I believe is on y'all's desk that I wanna make sure that we put into the record. This was something that um, y'all heard during public hearing and that I've heard along about um, the, the feasibility of adding more retail. That's something that neighbors wanted. With retail comes more traffic, and so it's that careful balance of traffic and retail. And so um, AJ, the developer, has uh, submitted a letter saying that to the point feasible, they will add it. 
this the reason that I couldn't put it into the the bill is because it would mess up some of the traffic counts and things, uh, and that's why I withdrew that amendment last time. But I wanted to make sure that everyone saw that they have a commitment to try to work on that piece of the community request as well. So with that, I am happy for other people to uh, make their. I guess I do you, would you like me to go ahead and move? I can move. No, I mean, I'll just go. I can go directly you to Councilmember Druffle. He's got uh, amendments two, three, four, and five. Uh, Councilmember Druffle, you're recognized. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, the First Amendment uh, allows for free parking, period. Right. This would be amendment number two Amen in the pack. Amendment number two. Uh, yeah, it reads, uh, in order to promote accessibility to projects of the project site by the public and to allow for broad community use, developers shall provide free parking for all restaurant customers and individuals accessing the Greenway and Creek area. Um, if you go to the, the community benefits from Bell Mead, it, it reads, uh, this development, the means more than 60% of the property would be dedicated to public open space for the entire community, including a new streetscape along Harding Pike Park areas, including a dog park, walkways, outdoor dining areas, and restored natural spaces to the creek. And I, I would suggest that you really, it, it, you only can drive there. There is no place. It's almost like an island. It's completely uh, encased by uh, the creeks, the, the, the bridge. So you only can drive. So if, if the community wants access, they have to drive and park. And, and an hour and a half isn't enough. But if you give access for these uses in terms of green space, it allows the community to feel part of the, the space. There's no sidewalks. Um, there's no other ways. There's no bike way. So really, there's no other way to get there except driving. And this promotes the spirit of what I think what they're trying to tell us is they want to create access for the community. So I would I would uh, move this amendment as in the spirit of, of what they're trying to uh, give us access to. All right. So Councilmember Druffle has moved amendment number two properly. Second, you've heard an explanation. Um, I've got people in the queue, so I'm going to take uh, questions uh, or hands up. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank We're you, on Mr. amendment number two. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to. I appreciate Councilmember Dribble's point there, but I'll say as somebody who uh, worked at one of the offices in the adjacent property just across the bridge, uh, I took transit to that site. I walked from that site straight over to Bellmead Plaza for lunch on multiple occasions, and I will say from personal experience, it's very possible to access the overall site without needing to drive there. In fact, I never parked at that site. Uh, when I was working over at that location. Thank you. Right, thank you. Uh, other people on the um, on the amendment? Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm going to speak against this amendment. We had some discussion. I know Council Member Treffle was uh, not feeling well, wasn't able to join us, but we, we did have discussion on this in planning and the planning and zoning uh, committee. And Council Member Murphy pointed out that there are currently several parking locations already in place along the Richland Creek Greenway, including in particular at McCabe uh, Golf Course. And there's a couple other locations where there's already parking, including locations that are quite close to this site. So in addition to the, the research, which states that uh, free parking and especially unlimited free parking tends to induce traffic, which we know is a major concern that was raised by folks in West Nashville. Um, that there is already uh, free parking that is available within this Greenway system at several locations. And you can go to the Greenways for Nashville website or Metro Parks uh, and, and find convenient maps that will locate where that free parking is located. And so providing some parking here I think is fine, um, but providing free and unlimited uh, time limits on parking for a Greenway uh, is not environmentally friendly because it induces traffic and it is also redundant to some of the existing parking lots that exist within our parks and greenway system already on this same greenway. Thank you. All right, Councilor Mendes. Councilor Mendes has called the previous question. So um, let's try the previous question first. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, previous question prevails. Uh, so we are voting on Council Member Druffle's um, amendment number Two. Um, so if you if you are for the amendment, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. We'll try it by voice vote first. All those in favor of Council Member Druffle's amendment number two say aye. aye. Opposed, no. No. All right, so uh, amendment number two fails. Uh, Council Member Druffle, we're on amendment number three. 
There you go. Thanks, Chair. Amendment three uh, really follows NDOT's policy. Um, they, it's just a safeguard, and I think it's a, a comfort level for the community to recognize that um, the phasing of the signal that it comes out of uh, Bellamy Plaza will be consistent with, with the current uses is now. To go there now, it's a, a bit, about a 10 to 15 second cycle going for a left turn signal. We just wanted to make sure that consistent with that going forward, that we have the same signal, not backing up traffic from west to uh, east coming up uh, Harding. And that's nothing more than following our an NDOT policy as it is right now. Thank you. All right, so Councilmember Druffel is moving amendment number three, properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the amendment, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Just have a quick question for that. I appreciate uh, the sponsor's um, concerns here, because again, I've been very familiar with this intersection for just about my entire life and want to make sure we get the timing right. My question to end out would be, does the does the language of the amendment um, constrain end out? I mean, the, the one thing I worry about with codifying this is we've watched design standards evolve so that MUTCD has, like we've joined NACTO as a member, and I want to make sure that as we do dynamic traffic signal timing, as we do some of the things NDOT has already described that actually should overall improve it, that we don't find ourselves legally restricted from uh, best practices that may not be codified exactly in the language of this amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, and on. Yes, uh, great question, Councilmember McConnell. Uh, that was considered when we when we looked at this, so we are not bound by the, the way the language has stated says the FHWA traffic signal timing manual, uh, that's not locking us into a certain version over time. It, it does update every now and then. So we, are, we won't be bound by this as far as the best practices in the future. And I guess, uh, and, and, and again, without trying to um, add any discomfort to the sponsor, I guess going back to end, I uh, appreciate that answer. I guess I just want to make sure that again, as we bring this traffic management center online, which I think is going to offer improvement citywide inclusive of Bellmead Plaza, that if something changes there where we weren't using this specific manual, that this amendment wouldn't tie our hands. That's my biggest concern is when we over codify things, when we know what the general um, principle we're trying to achieve is. Yes, uh, so council member, no sir, it won't tie our hands as far as the best practices followed in this manual when it comes to synchronization and the optimization of the signal system. Great, thank you. All right. Um, we're on amendment number three. Questions on amendment number three. Councilor, Councilor Mendez, previous question. All right, so Councilor Mendez has uh, called for the previous question. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Pre previous question prevails. We are on amendment number three by Council Member Truffle. Um, Let's try by voice vote. If you're for it, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. All those in favor of amendment number three by Councilmember Druffel say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment number three passes. All right. Uh, Councilmember Druffel, amendment number four. Uh, I will withdraw amendment number four. The purpose here was working with WeGo and making a super stop. I had a concern that a super stop would take the third lane. If you understand the entire project, uh, they will put a third lane in. If we put that third lane in and then put a super stop, I was a little concerned that would uh, delay traffic coming down that, and we have a signal close by. So I uh, just was looking for language, but there's language when Council Lady Murphy's and the conditions that uh, express some engineering as we go forward with WECO. So I withdraw. All right. Um, amendment number four is withdrawn. Amendment number five. Uh, amendment number five is is really can can uh, it is tough, but it but it beats the conditions that we're saying that this uh, development is supporting the community. We're getting some, some community input. Um, if you had a sidewalk that extends beyond this point, now we have a, a way to get to this um, uh, th this project without driving. Um, and and as as uh, uh, We've heard there are some ways to walk around the space, but purely from a neighborhood, there is no place, no way to get there. If you're living in the in the immediate area, uh, Bellamy, Will, Westmead, Hillwood, any place in the area, there's no other place to get there but drive. And th within the spirit of trying to create some mobility and extended mobility, uh, we're trying to get a sidewalk that would extend out into the neighborhood. Um, and I move that. Uh, I know there's some. Uh, legal issues, but the reality is we're just trying to find a space where we say we have multi-mobility, where we really don't, 
um, this would give us one, one place of mobility. I move the amendment. All right, so Councilmember Druffel has moved amendment number five, properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. If you wanna talk about the amendment, you gotta raise your hand. Councilmember uh, Murphy, you're recognized. Um, I look, first, uh, before I begin my comments, uh, NDOT, can you address, uh, I, I know that you said that in the conditions, part of this amendment is already in the condition that is in the bill, is that correct? Yes, and along the property front frontage, it is correct. Okay, so so the so how I would say I guess if you broke this amendment down into two, the first half of being the the Harding Pike Hillwood Boulevard intersection, that is already a condition in the bill. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so so that part is already in there. The second um, piece of this amendment is uh, taking a, a putting a sidewalk on Linwood Boulevard to Linwood Trace. If you look at uh, our walk and bike plan, it is not identified as a priority sidewalk. It is not identified as a long-term need sidewalk. Um, and it also is in the city of Belmede and would require negotiations with a private property owner. And my concern here is that we are putting a condition on here that I, I that Metro, I don't think would be able to necessarily have enforce or say over, and, and that's very concerning to me. Um, I believe that uh, Ms. Milligan yesterday referred to proportionality about this being an offsite improvement that is not directly connected. And I also did wanna follow up and say that there are several ways to walk here. Um, I know my colleagues have said that too. Um, I live at Whitebridge in Charlotte. I can walk here. Um, I could walk here from my father's house but at Woodmont and in South Wilson, um, maybe not always on a sidewalk, but I could still walk here. And my mother lives at the 70 hundred split and there are also ways to walk here or get transit to this location. And so this sidewalk, while I understand that it takes, uh, it, it gives a, a long a prop, one property, so one property frontage on Linwood would have this sidewalk. I, I'm, I feel like there are more meaningful connections already in the bill and that this already is is having half the, half the amendment is already in the bill. And so this is one that I do not think needs to be added because of the, um, the proportionality argument and the fact that the sidewalk's already in the bill. So I would ask my colleagues to not support this one. All right, I gotta go back to, um, keep going. Councilman Rosenberg, you're recognized. Previous question. Councilman Rosenberg had called the previous question. Um, we'll take a vote on the previous okay. question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, previous question prevails. Okay, so we are voting on amendment number five. Um, we'll try by voice vote. All those in favor of amendment number five say aye. All those in favor, uh, all those in favor of amendment number five say aye. Opposed, no. Amendment fails, all right? So we are now on, um, uh, those are all the amendments. Um, Councilman Murphy, we're back on BL 2023-1829. As amended, we put on amendment number one and amendment number three. You recognized. Great, thank you so much. Colleagues, thank you so much for um, your patience through this. I know that a lot of you have received phone calls, emails, letters, um, and have held your own visits and attended um, the nine plus meetings, the 20 plus hours of community meetings where we have hashed out. Um, and quite honestly, while it was um, a painful process at a lot of times, this, to be quite honest with you, it, it did stretch me in um, in where are what is best for my community, and ultimately, it's been a very difficult decision. This is an area that I grew up in. Um, this is the the shopping center that I have been going to since I was born. Um, it is it's always been a giant parking lot that does not serve the, the creek, it does not serve our environment, um, and, and quite frankly, it does not serve the community um, that it, it is in. It, it needs to reflect the great vibrant neighborhood that the Harding Corridor is. And I appreciate y'all being, you know, just giving me feedback, even when it's been tough, even when it's been hard. I appreciate those of you who have taken time out of your own council um, responsibilities to attend these meetings, 
to, to, I know several of you have watched them, gone back and watched them um, online, and I, I really appreciate this because I feel like I, this is really, this isn't a council member zoning. This has been, I've been supported by y'all through this, and and I think it has made it a better a better piece of legislation. The heights have come down. The heights have been restricted to no higher than the the Ingram building right next door. We are making, it has made major strides in hearing the community when they wanted parking, when we're trying to do retail, all of those things. But also at the end of the day, what is so important to me about this project too, is the fact that it is not going to just look like another building that has, um, that is just a flat wall that has no character to it. This is a neighborhood that has character. This is somewhat in my mind, a gateway to, to West Nashville and to, to the Western part of the county and the architecture and the plan and the green space and the, pres and the just respect of the creeks coming together here is just beyond important to me as a West Nashville girl born, raised, and will continue to live. And so thank you all for your support through this process. And um, I'd like to ask for your approval on it tonight. All right, so Councilman Murphy um, is moving to approve um, BL 2023-1829 for passage on third and final reading as amended. Again, properly seconded. I've got people in the queue um, I've been here for a while, so I'm gonna go through the queue and see if you still wanna be recognized. Councilmember Druffel? Okay. Uh, Councilmember Withers? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanna congratulate Councilmember Murphy uh, on a job exceptionally well done. Um, as colleagues, as we all know, uh, Councilmember Murphy is very particular about what projects she will and will not support in District 24. And usually that falls on the side of she will not support those projects because she doesn't feel that they meet her standards or those of her community. And so to have Councilmember Murphy support this project, um, e even to move forward at all, uh, but particularly with the amount of care that she has shown in incorporating amendments where feasible, really speaks to um, how much she believes that this is a quality project that will greatly enhance the future of the West Nashville community. Um, and, and so that's noteworthy. Um, I will also state that uh, it's not a surprise to me that with Councilmember Murphy being as thorough as she is, that she has done such a tremendous job of working with NDOT, with so many other departments, with adjoining projects uh, to make sure that a regional solution is pursued through this rezoning. Uh, that, that's remarkable. We were beginning to work with NDOT to do this a little bit more commonly, uh, but Councilmember Murphy has really led that. And I think in particular, particular, um, you know, just, just one example is sometimes small things uh, really make a big difference. But one thing that uh, council member, uh, former council member and commissioner Amina Johnston commented on was, you know, relocating a traffic signal from Kenner Avenue over to Ridgefield and uh, con uh, commissioner Johnston, uh, Johnson asked about that. And uh, the, the information that we received about how beneficial that will be um, to a uh, traffic flow in the whole area, as well as into the adjoining um, Hill Center development, uh, just really shows how doing homework uh, as a council member and really pushing for answers and pushing for additional detail uh, really can yield uh, long lasting improvements to our transit system, frankly, in Nashville. And so I, I just wanna commend uh, Council Member Murphy on working incredibly hard with her uh, constituents and with the neighboring property owners and especially with all of our departmental staff in coming up with what will be an iconic and truly remarkable project for the future of West Nashville and mm -hmm. encourage support of the bill as amended. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, Council Member Hart. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. I stand also um, wanting to thank Council Member Murphy for the efforts that she's made um, in this project. However, today I am asking for some compassion, some humanity, and some communication because we saw several people come 
and present a petition of 3,400 names of individuals who had some concerns. Now, I am not questioning the quality of the project, but what I am questioning is our responsibility to communicate with our constituents. At our last meeting, I know I left thinking that there was going to be perhaps a meeting and or some amendments that was going to be offered before this meeting tonight. And I did speak with Council Member Murphy um, today to, to talk to her and just tell her some of the concerns. So I'm thankful that she accepted my call and, and all of the work that has been done. But I wanted to um, indicate that um, just having a meeting so our constituents can feel as though they have been heard, that they have been listened to. It's one thing to, to hear what they're saying, but to, be, to listen is, is to be intent and in consideration of some of the things that are being requested. I've had emails after emails coming to me today, uh, all week, and even on uh, phone calls uh, in regards to this. So I'm just asking, and it just takes me back to August of 2016, when we had um, in our first term the same type of situation with Fontenelle. And so many of the constituents reached out to me and said that they did not think it was going to be good. They wanted to have more information, wanted to discuss it. And it voted 39 in favor and one against, which was me. And uh, two years later, they sold the property and we found that what the constituents were saying was absolutely true. So I'm just asking for a one meeting deferral so those constituents' voices can be heard. Thank you. So Councilmember Hurd, uh, let me make sure I'm clear. Are you moving for one meeting deferral? Yes. Okay. So Council Member um, Hurd is moving for a one meeting deferral. Yes, because the amendments were presented, but they were not discussed with the okay. constituents. All right. So Council Member Hurd moves for one meeting deferral properly seconded. Discussion on, um, we're now on a deferral motion of one meeting. All right. So um, hands up. Council Member Mendes, you recognize. Councilor Mendes has moved the previous question. Um, we're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, so uh, we're voting on a motion to defer one meeting uh, by Council Member Hurt. Uh, if you're for the motion to defer, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. All those in favor of a motion to defer one meeting say aye. Opposed, no. So the motion to defer fails. All right. Um, all right, so we're going to go back to um, uh, Councilmember Bradford. You're recognized. Councilmember Bradford has called the previous question on the bill. Um, all right, so we'll try that previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, so the previous question prevails. Um, we are now voting on BL 2023-1829 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Uh, Mr. Clerk, um, I think we're gonna have to go on the machines. So this is a motion to pass on third reading, BL 2023-1829 as amended. Mr. Clerk, you ready? Okay, Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Everybody in? All right. 
Mr. Clark, closed machines, take the vote. Ayes 28, uh, noes 1, uh, 3 abstentions. Uh, bill passes on third and final reading. Okay. All right, uh, we are now on the companion bill, uh, which is uh, the next bill is item 80. It's BL 2023-1830 by Councilmember Murphy. It's an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL 2023-1829. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Murphy, you recognized on your bill. Please keep Emily Benedict in the room. I see Matthew counting. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, get committee reports and move approval. All right, uh, committee reports, council member um, Weathers, uh, planning and zoning. Okay. Planning and zoning recommend approval, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, back to you, council member Murphy. Move approval, so Emily can leave. Uh, council member Murphy has moved approval of BL 2023-1830 um, for passage on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, passage on third reading of BL 2023-1830, um, uh, vote aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third reading. Okay, we've, we've got um, a couple more bills. Uh, this is um, item number 85 and item number 86, which can be taken together. Uh, BL 2023-1836 by Councilmember Rosenberg. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from AR 2A to SP zoning on a portion of property located at 6010 Pasquo Road, approximately 520 feet south of Nahani Trail. It's 5.3 acres. And then the companion bill, which is BL 2023-1837 by Councilmember Rosenberg. Ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2023-1836. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricting the construction of buildings. Councilman Rosenberg, recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee report, please. All right, planning and zoning, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning recommended approval of both items, seven in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Councilman Rosenberg, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Not only would I hate to pass a zoning bill without the chair of the powerful budget and finance committee here tonight, but we're missing a page of the SP. So I'm going to move for a one meeting deferral. To you need a that, one meeting please. deferral on both bills? On both bills, please, okay. and get so, LKR. So the motion by Councilman Rosenberg is to defer both these bills, 1836 and 1837, for one meeting, properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Both those bills are referred one meeting. I think we have one more bill left. It's item number 88. It's bill 2023-1840 by Councilmember O'Connell, Roten, and Withers. It's an ordinance approving a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government of National Edison County and Little Big Properties LLC for use of office space located at 152nd Avenue North. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to uh, move approval, brief comment. All right, so uh, motion is to approve, properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you. I know uh, Councilmember Roten is out sick tonight, but he's been tremendously helpful on this. And I think if he weren't stricken by uh, disease of the throat, he'd want to speak forcefully in favor of our strong collaboration in this. Um, it's, it's a bill I know he spent an incredible amount of time on, and I hope he's proud of it. And I look forward to uh, people passing this as his co-sponsor. Thank you. All right, so the motion is to approve, uh, properly seconded. I think we have one abstention. Uh, if there's no objection, we'll just take it. We'll list Council Member Mendes as uh, abstaining. Um, so we are on BL 2023-1840 for passage on third and final reading. Again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third and final reading with one abstention. And I believe that's it. Is that all? Okay. All right. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. What? I need a motion to adjourn. Properly seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. And so the council has concluded about a three in hour and 40 minute meeting tonight. Um, perhaps the, one of the major things that happened very, very much towards the end was the council's approval by a vote of uh, 
Let's see, it was 28 to 1 with three abstentions to approve the, what has been a controversial rezoning for the Bellmead Plaza Shopping Center in West Nashville. Uh, there was about a two and a half hour debate and public hearing about this at the last meeting. Uh, there were some additional amendments put on. Some people thought there should be more amendments to be considered at a meeting with the community. In fact, there was one last effort uh, by Council Lady Hurt to try to get the bill deferred for another meeting, but the council rejected that on a voice vote and went ahead and voted to approve the bill as it is. Uh, this is a major change in the area, uh, but quite a few uh, changes were made to it as it came through the committee, including some amendments that were added tonight. So that bill will now go on to uh, Mayor John Cooper for his consideration and, and likely his, uh, signature. Uh, on the third reading meetings, bills that went through tonight, uh, some had been here for quite some time. What was the regulation of city for of, of animals in the city? Similar bills had been up here for some time for the last, uh, and uh, has so far had not been successful. There were, there was one substitute bill put in last week, that two weeks ago, at the last meeting, that uh, did seem to, to, to get it done, but there was one final amendment added tonight that seemed to make it pretty good. So the bill again passed on third and final reading will go on to Mayor Cooper for his consideration. Finally, the council had a bill that it had before it since back in September. It defined in the code, uh, amended the definitions of what a dwelling unit is and a family. Originally, they were gonna let up to seven people, unrelated people, be in the same building, it was the same uh, dwelling place at the same time. The council went up and down from two, three, four, five, all the way up to, uh, to seven. Uh, final bill that was put in, the final amendment that was put in tonight would say uh, up to um, four bedrooms, you could have four unrelated people, but uh, if it got above that, you could go up to five. So uh, some debate, debate about that, but the council voted 22 to nine in favor of that. That bill will also go on to the council, to uh, Mayor Cooper for his consideration. The council also tonight on first reading approved the mayor's $3.2 billion operating budget. Uh, it will now be coming back to the council in two weeks. Uh, uh, in the next council meeting on June 6th, and uh, the council will be having meetings before that to look over the budget, but they'll be hearing from the public on the June 6th, and that's usually one of the bigger nights that has lots of people come down to say what they think about the budget and what they think should be done or not be done uh, with the money the city, the city spends. The council has to approve that by no later than June 30th. Council also considered the capital improvements budget. That's a planning document, a five-year planning document. It doesn't spend any money. The city's gonna make any, gonna do anything with it, plan it or build a capital project. It has to be in that budget. They want to add it during the year. It's not in the budget. It takes 27 votes of the council or a two-thirds vote, yes vote, to put it into, into the uh, capital improvements budget. That has to be approved by the council by June 15th under the charter. Uh, elsewhere tonight, there was also a resolution the council approved tonight on a voice vote that would increase the uh, eligibility in terms of income for uh, property tax freeze that the state and metro have put together. Uh, financial assistance to low-income and elderly residents. Uh, right now, the, the income level is about $47,750. New eligibility goes up as high as $60,000. If you're interested in that program, you might want to contract the Metro Trustee's office. Metro also allocated tonight uh, about uh, $35 million, 10 different departments out of its 4% fund, which is Metro takes 4% of all its revenue and puts it in a fund that can, departments can use for equipment and building repairs. Uh, the council approved that without any real discussion, although there was one council member who did raise the question of what, how, what the city has a problem with not having enough tow trucks to get cars off the road. Uh, a lot of that's because Metro doesn't do that itself. It does a lot of it through private enterprise, and, and we're so far the RFPs are not getting in a lot of people to do that. So the money could be used to buy tow trucks, but it couldn't be used to hire personnel. So if that's going to be addressed, it's going to have to be something that also has something to do with uh, getting some money to, to hire personnel to do that, if that's what the city wants to do. Um, the council also uh, looked at the regulation of fireworks in Nashville tonight, although that bill was deferred. There was one to, where presently fireworks are not allowed in the inside the county. There was a bill that right now looks to be ready to be amended down to just allowing it for a brief time during the 4th of July in the late morning and through most of the afternoon into the evening. But that bill was deferred in committee, so it's been deferred as well. We'll see what the council wants to do with that when it comes back up uh, in two meetings, well, excuse me, well, in the meeting on, on June 6th. Uh, the council is uh, in recess at this, at this point. Oh, one other thing I do want to mention tonight, uh, there was again some discussion over some leases that were for the council that involved charters schools. Many members of the council are not fans of charter schools. They are public schools, but uh, they don't like charter schools. They feel like it takes money away from the public schools. So there was an effort uh, in a couple of cases to uh, 
raised some opposition about that. In one case, the building was on second reading to approve a charter school. The lease for a charter school in, in, a, in a metro building um, was uh, was an effort to try to defer it for more information about the contract. Some, people, some council members didn't like the, the terms in the contract for the lease, uh, but the council rejected that and the bill did pass on second reading. Another bill was on third reading for a charter school also went ahead and passed on third and final reading, but there were some no votes as that came up as well. That's not the first time that's happened, but it did happen again tonight. Council's now in recess until the first Tuesday in June. That'll be June 6th. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's Metro Council meeting has been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.